everybody. Happy Friday. You're very welcome to the weekend, man. Hope you're all keeping very well. And tonight, friends, we start our first of a four-part special. We're going to be following a very historic flight. All the way back in 1928, three adventurers, well, they departed from Casement Aerodrome Baldonnell in a Junkers W33 aeroplane. And their mission was to be the first time a fixed-wing aeroplane would fly from the east to the west across the Atlantic Ocean. Loads of history here. So it was made up of a team. There was two guys from Germany, one guy from Ireland. And this was the first time this sort of crossing uh, would ever happen. It was a year after, of course, we had the Spirit of St. Louis who flew from the west to the east. Now, that was a feat that was, by all means, quite incredible. But it had the advantages of flying with the wind. For the Bremen, they were going to fly against the wind, which was like, you're doing what? Crazy stuff, right? So what we're doing over the next... Uh, fix your microphone. Over the next four weeks, well, we're going to be following along a route that the Irish Air Corps and the German Air Force took back in 2003. That's when they celebrated the 75th anniversary of the Bremen flight. The flight itself, well, it took off from Baldonnell, flew up to Iceland, Greenland, over to Goose Bay, until they got down towards Greenlee Island. Now, the flight of the Bremen itself, all the way back in 1928, well, that took about 36 and a half hours. They got lost. They had engine problems, navigation. You can imagine the sort of rudimentary avionics they had of the day. Well, it was dodge, to say the least. So I said, listen, I can't do much worse. What if I were to fly in the most, you know, advanced avionics aircraft in normal use today? And, uh, well, you know, let's see what happens. So over the course of the next four weeks, yes, we're going to be flying the route that the Air Corps took. Uh, yeah, baby! <laughs> the German Air Force, right? And I've changed one of the airports. This is the first, this is the fourth first. This is the fourth time as a community where we get to do this flight. Uh, so it's it's a very special thing. It's just, it's one of ours. Do you know what I mean? It's the event of the fireflies, if you like. So um, this hello week... There. Hello there. This week, we're going to be flying in the Airbus A320, the Phoenix. And, uh, well, if anyone else has the Phoenix, sure, fly along. If you don't have the Phoenix, any A320, anything. You can fly anything. You want to be able to keep up cruise-wise, anything that can fly at about 250 to 300 knots, give or take, and get up to an altitude... Plus or minus flight level 30 or 30,000 feet. We're going to be live on the Southeast Asian server, and I'll also have JoinFS powered up as well if you want to use other simulators. If you want to use X-Plane or P3D, well, that's entirely up to you as well. So each week, we're going to cover each part of the flight that the Air Corps took, but we're going to learn a lot about, you know, the history of the time, the aircraft, what it was like to build, and how we can kind of compare it to what we have today. I mean, the Junkers W33, it was ahead of its time. It featured some of the coolest stuff that wasn't seen again for a number of years. It was ahead of its time. Then it comes to the navigation options. You know, how did the guys actually manage to find their way? They were flying pretty much in all sorts of weather, as you can imagine, across the Atlantic Ocean. What do they have for food? How did they manage? How did they communicate? How did they not bait the head of each other? Do you know what I mean? 36 hours in a close, confined area. I mean, right, do you know? Uh, like We get thick sitting on a bus beside someone for 20 minutes. Oh God, I have to sit beside your man. He smells the sandwiches and cabbage. Uh, do you know what I mean? So uh, <laughs> we'll be learning all about that. And of course, learning about the lads. Well, where do they come from? And each of the, uh, each of the crew, fascinating stories behind them. As I said, two guys from Germany, one from Ireland, and, well, the history these guys, the experiences these guys had that led them to this very event. Plus, what was it like in aviation back then? I mean, 1928, there was a lot of stuff happening. Some of the most famous names in aviation, all the pioneers are there. But what was it like to fly? Do you know? So we'll be doing all of that over the next four weeks. And I didn't read a bit of that. I actually didn't. That's all. Right. D danger. Right. Information overload. So I do have, uh, I have a load of pictures and some videos and stuff uh, to show you as well as we're on our flight. So uh, I'm loaded in here in Case with Aerodrome. Back then it was just known as, well, no, it was, was it? No, it wasn't known as Case with Aerodrome. It was just Baldonnell. And uh, there was no concrete runways or tarmac runways at the time. And uh, the airport we're using, the scenery, it's, uh, it's a freeware. Highly, highly recommended you go grab it. It's from Jeppesen 2001, and it is that of the Irish Air Corps uh, headquarters in Baldonnell. Casement Aerodrome Baldonnell, Echo India Mike Echo. And you can pick it up over on our website. Uh, I think exclamation point scenery 
you know, should or casement. Well, something like that will do the trick, do you know? So anyway, before we kind of delve into it, uh, we have a challenge. Just like the original Bremen crew had a challenge. Their aircraft had to take off in a fairly short kind of space of runway. In actual fact, when the Bremen landed in Baldonnel, the pilot said, uh, this isn't, well, they were German, and this is not getting back off the hill, right? So um, they had to pay, I don't know what it was, the equivalent money anyway, they had to pay a farmer to knock a wall, <laughs> right? So the A320, it needs about 6,000 feet, give or take, of runway. We've just under 5,000 feet here, so we're off to a great start. Do you know, great start. And we're on live weather as well, just, you know what I mean, just to really add pain and misery and everything else we can add in, do you know? So, uh, before we get going, well, it's time to welcome everyone in, do you know what I mean? Bit of music here in the background, maestro. So it's four weeks of this, and the aircraft that I'm choosing, the A320 is tonight, then we're going to have a look at the Boeing 737, the BAE-146, and then towards the latter part, well, we have a very special aircraft to show off, uh, as we will be releasing a brand new livery, a celebratory livery for this flight, and it's going to feature that for the C-160 Transall. Now you might be wondering, Murph, why is the Transall in there? We'll learn later, but I'll tell you now, and then I'll say it again for those who aren't here, they'll be like, that fella knows the stuff. But would you believe it? It was C-160 Transall actually flew the Bremen back to Germany, back in the 70s or 80s. Did you know that? It was a C-160. Right? Mad, lads, mad. Uh, but anyway, who's here? Look, there's loads. Alison Johnson, happy Friday. Super Typhon is in the house. Welcome in. Lee Dixon, good to see you, man. Tarnished Moss Man is in the chat. Welcome aboard. Uh, Nighthawk says, hello from Canada. Hello from Ireland. Hope you're well, man. Eamon, 1973. Happy Friday to you, my dude. Uh, now, let me see. Cyrus T. He's just after subscribing at a tier three. 23 months. That's insane support, Cyrus. Thank you very, very much indeed. It's great to see you, man. Uh, now, let me see. Well, oh, how much? Good to see you. Renoir rambles in. 16 months. Thank you very, very much indeed for all the support, guys. Really do appreciate it. Night Zep rambles aboard. And uh, B. Carlo, happy Friday. Captain Sickbag, who shared great news with us earlier on. Happy Friday to you, man. Hope all is well. Fierce Wolf is here, looking fierce and wolfy. Very, very Fierce Wolf. Uh, Chox, welcome in. Viper Strike is in the chat. He says, good afternoon, Murph and Fireflies. I flew in Brazil today. Oh, nice. Brazil? Did you ever have Brazil nuts? Did you ever have Brazil? They're lovely. Um, now, Sean Dale is here. He says, happy Friday, everyone. Uh, think, oh no, this is going to be great four-week adventure. It is, it is. It'll be fun. It's something different. I used to fly this in one sitting. It used to take anywhere between eight and 12 hours. And I said, well, yeah, we could do that, right? But, uh, but time is, you know, work is busy and time and everything else. So uh, I said, look, we'll, we'll spread it out a bit, do you know? Uh, SK Sun is in the house, good to see you. Tritz, welcome aboard. Hemingbird is here, she says, I found out today that my nickname at school was Batteries. I thought it was because I had a positive side, but actually it's because I wasn't included in any games. Still, at least I was a AAA student. <laughs> it's it's, it's kind of sad, right? I didn't have friends, and the friends I did have, they weren't real. Right, I, I was there, I was one of them. It's grand. Uh, Spitfire RAF 100. Welcome aboard, man. Good to see you. Six Knots is here. First stream leg is active. So, Six Knots, welcome in. Also, for anyone who flies with our beloved airline, virtual airline, Firefly Air, well, Six Knots has gone off and he's done a whole load of stuff. Each week, we're going to have a ferry flight option um, off the stream, so you can fly it in your own time, and it's all about repositioning aircraft. So tonight, for example, we're starting off from Casement Aerodrome in an A320. Now, Firefly Air, its, local, its nearest hub is Dublin. So it was a flight from Dublin to Casement Aerodrome in an A320. Flight time, about 11 seconds. However, uh, there is a landing rate limit. And I can see a lot of people have already managed to get the achievement. But next week, well, it, you got to fly us back from Iceland back to Dublin and then fly Dublin over to Greenland and so on and so forth. It's You'll see it all on Firefly Air, but amazing work by Six Knots. You, a genius, do you know? Proby Peters here, it's good to see you. Uh, Dougal McTavish, the chairman. Hello, Dougal. You're very welcome aboard, man. Ranbog Mord is here. Ranbog, I saw you in the other place chatting with the thing, with the yoke, with the thing. He's now known as Adam the Lit. 
We'll just, we, we, it'll stick. It'll stick, right? It's good to see you, man. Gassius Maximus, happy Friday. Hope all is well. Filthy is here. Time for some Friday flyage. Indeed, man, indeed. I won't even charge you for that pun. Brilliant. Uh, now, let me see. Navnak, hello, hello. You're very welcome aboard. Shuffles Shoes, Shuffles in. AJH John, hope you're well. Martel is in the house. Welcome in. Lead Balloon, good to see you. Uh, did you like the footage at the start? I recorded it myself all the way back in 1928. It was a cold Wednesday, right? I wore my blue jumper. Uh, but yes, uh, hello as well to everyone watching us on YouTube. You're very welcome aboard as well, guys. And uh, well, we do have stunning 4K, right? You know, all of this in all of that in 4K, right? Uh, welcome in. Gary Duggan, I see you. Good to see you, man. Uh, who else, Jesus? The screen over here, I have it very minimized because there's lots. We'll go to YouTube now in a second. <laughs> Be grand. Uh, now, let me see. Captain Meowington's good to see you. Soaring AJ. I keep I keep popping against me mic. Or phone. Jesus. Uh, but yes, now, where are we at? Soaring AJ, good to see you. Jeppesen, 2001. The man, myth, and legend has only rambled in and graced us with his presence. Love your work, man. Hello there. Hello there. It's great to see you. Old veteran 965, he says, howdy all. It's Friday and I'm not nearly done with work. <sighs> and a lot more work for the weekend. <sighs> I'm going to be knackered for Monday. I love that. Scott has a, well, he lives in Texas, right? But I love, I love seeing, well, I love reading it, but then I kind of hear it in me, I audualize it in me head, right? People from outside of Ireland who have a different accent than those Irish, right? And and they, they use Irish words. Well, I'm not saying knackered is an Irish word, but like we say it like I, as I'm knackered, do you know? Or A-J-H, ah, Jesus, how are you? Right? But when you hear another accent say it, it's, the, like, it's like, it's like that bell, you know, whenever you hear that bell, an angel gets its wings. It's like that sort of thing, do you know? Uh, but yes, now, Black Eyes Gabe is in the house. We have a Black Eyes Gabe. Welcome in. Welcome in. Uh, see you later is here. Kanzui is in the house. Welcome in, lads. No undies, McGee. You're looking well. You're looking very well. Paparazzi is here. He says, hello, fireflies. Happy Friday. Uh, I'm work lurking, but trying to fly. I'm sort of stuck in the hangar over there, but I'll be along shortly. <laughs> Good to see you, man. Airlock Doc. Hello, Airlock. He says, okay, people, it's Friday. It's Bremen, it's Murphy, so expect the unexpected. Yeah, baby! Right, do you know what I mean? Great to see you. Dr. Notham is in the house. Welcome in, Dr. Notham. Sir Camps a lot. Good evening, my dude. Hope you're well. Goblin Zeus is here. He says, good evening. I just left the Bronco for the 737. The Bronco got released and it's awesome, isn't it? Toto, 24.95. Good day to you, my dude. Paparazzi says, on another note, I'm getting a warning that the aircraft is too heavy for the runway. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. It's going to be grand, right? Panic and immediate regret. That's what we're... Look at the cut of the sky there behind us. Uh, now, larger life, it's good to see it. Filthy says, do you have the route for tonight? Uh, exclamation point route. We'll give you the route. Uh, we do have a flight plan there. Uh, now, let me see. The first full journey was epic. It was a lot of fun, wasn't it? A lot of fun. I have some long haul flights scheduled this year. <clears> Triple <throat> seven. But uh, do you know what I mean? As the fella said, sure, we have to get home from, you know... America when we fly there. So, right. Mum's the word. Who? You're... What? Uh, now, it took you 11 hours to do it in the Transal. That's right. Any A320, how many are there? Too many. There's too many. Rod Barron is here. Spirit of St. Louis was eight years after Alcock and Brown's first transatlantic crossing. Yes, it was. Um. Now, all what way did they go, though? As in, did they have to stop somewhere along the way? Or did they make it to Ireland or something? Wasn't there something mad about that? Uh, now, let me see. Uh, Zybok Doc is here. He says, hello from Denmark. Hello from Tipperary. I hope you're keeping very well. Uh, we'll learn all the history anyway in a bit. There's no duty free. There was no duty free back then. They had sandwiches and bouillon. All right, it sounds lovely. Do you know, instant heartburn. Ali says, it's a wee bit busy on the ground. Might set off. Yes, that's quite okay, Ali. Head off. It's going to be busy on the ground. Yes, head away, head away quick. Uh, now, Muse fan bursts in the door. He says, how he is his mad jokes. Happy Friday. I'll fly along if I can solve the... Insert disc error. Muse, do the thing that I did on the YouTube video. It should do the same. Huh? It'll do the same fix. you got to stop the gaming services and start them again. Just under 6,000 feet. Oh, Jesus. Oh, it's just under 6, is it? It's under 6 or slightly over 5 with the wind. It'd be grand. It'll be totally fine. Rogue Nation, good to see you, man. Uh, now, let me see. We're over here. Look, Dragon says, hello, hello, Murph and chat. Welcome in. Larger Life, uh, Southeast Asia server. He knows stuff, right? Are we going to go to BIKF? 
It's B-I-K-F. What do I have on Discord? B-I-R-K? Oh, Jesus, lads, really? Hang on, we need to confirm that. We haven't even got off the ground, and I'm going to send us the wrong way. It's B-I-K-F, it should be. Let's just double-check that. B-I... Hang on. Kevlevik, B-I-K-F. I need to fix Discord. B-I-K-F. Kevlevik. That's where we're heading for, right? Uh, now, let me see. Uh, Key and Lafford, good to see you. Not a fan of those nuts. The Brazilian nuts. Ah, go away out of that. Brazil nuts taste of disappointment. Like fruit tea. Fruit tea? Uh, Sterling is here. Good day to you, man. Welcome aboard. Zard is in the house. How's it going, eh? From Canada. It's going well. It's going well. Uh, now, battery's not included. Wasn't that a movie? Uh, now, let me see. May I? Where is this now? Uh, no, but B-I-K-F most certainly is. Yeah, I probably made a mess of it. Do you know what I mean? 40 Gumble, happy Friday. Mutley is in the house. Uh, B-I-F-K is a typo. <laughs> Wouldn't be like Murphy to make a mistake at all. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Uh, Rocky Pilot is here. Good to see you. Ryan, good to see you. Greg Gore is in the house. Aviator Geek, welcome aboard. Jesus, busy. Uh, now let me see. We're over here, look. Uh, Charlie B, hello from Sweden. Hello from Ireland. Good to see you. Happy Friday. Cy Murray is in the house. Uh, how are we all on this fine Friday? You're, it's going well. There's things happening. Uh, now, where are we at? We're over here, look. We're catching up. Patrick! Actually, how are you, Patrick? Dougal had a CTD second time from Casement. Oh, Jesus, Dougal. Dougal, I think there was an update for Casement. I'm almost certain of it. If you have the original one, I think Jeppesen gave us a, a bit of an update uh, a couple of months back. I think. Do you know? Uh, but uh, fingers crossed. Uh, if it's too heavy, maybe the aircraft needs to go on a flight. But to be fair, that wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. Uh, Mr. Dan, it's good to see you. If you're going to Burke, it's exactly the same route. B-I-R-K. Well, yeah, it's the same route. It's just a different airport. Do you know what I mean? Fallen up. Good to see you. Charles Fluid and Ryan. Hang on now. Charles Fluid in Orion with a hard chair and a telescope and no digital media. Right? Do you know what I mean? Charles Lindbergh, of course. Uh, so when are we going to do another low and slow Route 66? Or maybe Coast Highway? I was looking at the I-90 run. And there was something... That, what's the one that goes from... Um, What's the one that goes across the north, uh, east to west, from like, you know, Boston to uh, Seattle? That'll be an interesting one, wouldn't it? I think it'd be fun. And now, let me see, we're catching up here all together. Uh, Murph confirmed destination, different to Discord. Yeah, because I'm an idiot. I need to fix it because I'm an absolute idiot. Hang on a second now. What do I, what did I put on? <sighs> so we have, oh, look, I did, shh, shh. Don't mind me for a second. Uh... How do I change this without everyone knowing how much of an idiot I am? B-I-K-F. Now, I'll type that in there, and then on the stream schedule... Oh, Jesus, I did a complete and utter balls of it there, too. Oh, shh, shh, shh. Uh, B-I-K-F. How did I get that wrong? Right, lads, it's fixed. All, all previous information, misinformation has been fixed. Right. Was going to do the Bremen flight for my history project in school until my teacher said that we can't research anything from mainstream history. Seemingly, the Bremen flight is a piece of male history. Huh? Why would they not let... Mainstream, not male. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, yeah, just in reinstalling gaming services, there was a Windows 11 update yesterday. I reckon that knackered it. Ah, right, okay. Eagle Castle is here. The lovely Kaharia has rambled in. She's lurking in the background as she subscribed for 37 months at a tier two. Thank you very, very much indeed, Kaharia. Great to see you. Now, let me see. We're over here, look. Mick Ham is good to see you. Catbat9 is in the house. Catbat and Catbatage Cat. Welcome in. Daz Higgy, good to see you. Can't remember... Uh, I had a CTD. It must be nearly a year. Jesus, Captain Sigbag, are you serious? You lucky devil. The I-90, is that the one? Right, okay. Basically, ignore anything that Murph says. Eamon, you're onto something there. 100%, right, 100%. Right, we're going to move over to a different screen here when I press some buttons. Are we ready? There's not a giveaway. Don't mind that. I forgot to turn it off. Well, we might do one later. We'll see. Uh, right, now. So, welcome in, lads. Some soundage. So, uh, as I said, there's, there's quite a bit of history here, right? Quite a bit of history. So the route is Baldonald to... Wait now. Where are we going, Murph? Ba, 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 ba. There's two airports, right? Hang on a second, lads. Diddly do, diddly do, diddly diddly do. Who's in charge? I haven't a clue what you're doing. It's B-I-K-F. That is where we're going. B-I-K-F. Yes. B-I-K-F. That's, uh, Kefkevik. 
Yes, that's where we're going. Right. Jesus, for a second there, I was got right. <sighs> B wait now. B I K F is Kevlovic. Why do I have it in here different? Who's in charge? Kef La Vic. There we go. I mean, out during the hoop. Anyway, so it's going to be a Baldonado up to Kevlovic. That is our flight for tonight, right? Just in case there's any confusion, follow me. All will be well in the realm, right? All will be well in the realm. Uh, now, let me see. Uh, it's a budget KFC. Yes, two cats. That works. Absolutely works. Uh, now, let me see. Who else is here? Uh, spooled up. Good to see you. You're very welcome aboard. Uh, Sticky Rice. Damien Merck. Good to see you, lads. Wayland Chutani. You're very welcome aboard, man. If you have the gaming disc problem, check whether the Xbox Live servers have the problem. You had the same issue yesterday? Gotcha, okay. V-Sky check, welcome aboard. I left my shield at the counter. Marvel asking. Yes, yes, yes. Vickers Vacate, good to see you. Uh, and to everyone watching us on YouTube, you're very welcome aboard, lads. Happy Friday. And, uh, well, welcome in. So, our flight plan, I better show you this now in case, you know, I've confused everyone. So, this is what we're doing, right? Uh, it's an IF4 flight plan, taking off from Baldonnell, and it's out over the, uh, well, it's out over the, uh, the Atlantic, and then we're into the, the North Sea, right? Uh... What is the name of the sea up here? There is a line here. I suppose it's the Atlantic. But anyway, uh, when the lads flew this route originally, they took off from Baldonnell, headed out over Galway, and then they just started cruising along, right? And they were expecting to get there in about kind of 18 hours. That's what they were hoping for. But of course, the weather changed. It got kind of all messy. Uh, you know, very, very low visibility. At one stage, they were only flying a few hundred feet off the ground. And uh, of course, back then with the aircraft, there was no such thing as GPS or VOR, radio navigation. There wasn't even de-icing or anti-ice features on the aircraft. So you can imagine the crack, right? You can imagine it. Um, I don't know where we're going, but it'll be a party when we get there, says Fallen Up. Exactly, right? Aries says, Murph's route, start here and end there. Very accurate. Very, very accurate. So looking at our flight plan, uh, at Casement Aerodrome. Now, Baldonnell is not one for commercial aircraft. However, it can take a 757. Um, and it has on occasion taken 7.3s and A320s. The longest runway is 1.0 or 2.8. And we can have a look at the runway here. Uh, you know, we can look at the runway details when we open our charts, right? So our route is fairly straightforward. Um, it's departing out of Baldonnell. Uh, it's going to fly us out over Dublin. We're going to pick up the Dublin VOR and then it's off to the northwest, out over Donegal, and then we're into it, right? That's what we're going to do. Now, some of the information that we might need, well, let's have a look. So let's have, uh, the, the, the runway length here is just under 6,000, right? Now, pinch of salt with that, but roughly, right? Uh, and then we've just under 5,000 if it's the shorter runway. So just bear that in mind. Now, we are getting a bit of a headwind, or a bit of a, yeah, a bit of 10 knot headwind. And uh, there's also a crosswind component as well. So plenty of power will be needed on takeoff, right? Uh, now, if we have a look then at our arrival, how things are going to work, well, lads, uh, it'll be interesting because we're going to do a landing onto runway 01 over at Keflavik. Now, at the moment, the weather is quite nice. It's going to take us just under three hours to get there. And if we have a look at the airport right now, well, let's start checking out the weather. Now, it's all well and good getting the weather for what it's like on the ground. However, we could uh, look at the TAF, the Terminal Area Forecast, your weather forecast. This is going to tell us what it's going to be like over the next little while. So we can see. Uh, winds 360 at 22 knots. We've good visibility, scattered clouds at 3000, um, and that pretty much expires until, uh, that, that's going to be the way it is until tomorrow. So it's going to be coming, uh, let me see, 010 at 8 knots. So the wind is starting to die down and just calm a little bit, right? The change is gradual. Uh, it's going to go to the, you know 10 degrees at 8 knots. Again, we have good visibility, scattered clouds, and there's a ceiling about 12,000 feet, and the change is gradual. All right, so the weather is actually pretty okay. It won't be the case when we get to Greenland and so on. But for this, we're, we're quite okay. Neo, good to see you, man. Thank you very much. 19 months, Neo. Cheers, man. Very kind of you. So that's what's going to happen over that neck of the woods. And uh, so the rest of it, we're going to see. Uh, now, in terms of uh, weather, I'm using live weather. And the time I have set is uh, 0650 in the morning. And the Bremen blasted off at around 4.55 or 5 o'clock in the morning. We could do that, but you know what I mean? Um, it, it, we want to see what's going on. It'd be different when we get over the sea, but for the first bit, you know. So if you want to change your time in the same, I think morning time is nice. We'll fly into the fly into the day. Uh, somewhere around kind of the 6, 0.620 or 0.630, give or take, right? Now, the last little thing I need to do, I just want to turn on the Join FS server. 
So if anyone is experiencing issues on Microsoft server, uh, you can quietly duck out of that. And as I said, if you're going to be on a different uh, simulator, X-Plane or P3D, well, you can fly along with us using JoinFS. If you don't know what this is, just put in exclamation point JoinFS, right? And that should make everything tickety-boo. So the scenery we have here, this was all created by Jeppesen 2001 and it features, of course, Casement Aerodrome. And what we have here is a model that Jeppesen made and it features the Bremen, um, which is the Junkers W33, right? Uh, and it's done in great detail, fair play to him. Uh, what is significant about this location in the real world in Baldonnel, well, there is a plaque, the Bremen, 1928, and it's located uh, down by Hangar 3 and 4. And uh, this plaque is still there to this day. There was a big commemoration done here, as I said, on the 75th anniversary. This year marks the 96th anniversary. So in four years time, there's going to be a big hooli about the flight of the Bremen, right? But at the moment, this is where we're going to be flying from. Now, this scenery, this uh, rendition of Casement Aerodrome, it is highly accurate, highly, highly accurate. And it was all built by Jeppes in 2001. It's freeware and it's, I can, I can attest to how accurate it is. I grew up on this place. Uh, 18 years I lived in this, uh, in, on the airbase. Uh, now my dad flew a desk. He wasn't a pilot. He flew the desk and uh, we lived in married quarters. In actual fact, the Murph gaff was over here, look. So this is down by the officer's mess. A lot of, uh, a lot of people have been in and out of the officer's mess for various functions and weddings and all that sort of jazz. That was my gaff there, look. Right? Some say there's a room in there that the wallpaper is made of stew, uh, but that's that's the case with Aerodrome. So uh, we're up here in the main square, in by the main gate, and if you have a look at it in here, look. Like, the detailing is superb, right? It just looks beautiful. Now, everything that was used to recreate this facility in Microsoft Flight Simulator, well, it's all in the public domain, right? Um, and a bit of common sense, like, I mean, it, it's, it's an active uh, military installation, but it just has a lot of history. So you have the main block there uh, with the lighting Hello and there. the uh, tricolour. And as we move up towards where the ramp is, uh, as I said, that's where the Bremen uh, plaque is. We have a beautiful model of the Bremen. And then our aircraft of choice tonight, we're, fl we're flying the flagship. This is Firefly Air. Uh, it's an A320. It's the IAE engines. So this is our craft that's going to be taking us out of Casement Aerodrome uh, and it's going to take us on up to Iceland. That is the plan, right? So... Let's see what we're going to do here. Uh, and as I said, you know by just looking at the ramp, it's not designed, it's not catering to some of the larger aircraft. It's quite small. And you go all the way back, even to the early 50s, there were no fixed runways here. There were all grass runways. Uh, today, thankfully, uh, well, they have decent runways. There's modern ILS facilities as well. And uh, it's, it's pretty grand. So our runway of departure is going to be runway 28 which is this direction, and we're going to be taking off towards, uh, we're going to be taking off towards Newcastle, and then we'll be turning up over Dublin itself. That's kind of the, the plan, right? That's what we're going to be doing. And the weather is kind of, well, it's interesting to say the least. There's a bit of wind, a bit of rain, and all the jazz, right? So, our aircraft currently, uh, I have it on the GPU power, uh, but I need to configure everything and set it up. And I suppose the hope is over the coming uh, next couple of Fridays, well, the different aircraft I'm going to be flying, well, hopefully it'll be handy for you guys figuring out, but well, how do you make the thing work, right? So first and foremost, quick check on our overhead. So I'm going to turn on the fuel pumps. As I said, all I've done, I turned on our two batteries, activated the external power. I turned on the crew supply and our ground control for the recording has now been started. That's all. I have my nav light on, my wing light on, and we'll just pop on the no smoking uh, sign, right? Uh, your payload is going to be important here. Fuel and payload on this flight is, is it's, it's especially for takeoff, right? So we'll have to wait and see. And let me see, my rat has been deployed. Well, the curse of Jays is in it. I need to fix that. Maintenance, uh, oh no, hang on now. Menu, maintenance, failures, rat deployed and clear. That's how you fix the RAT, your ram air turbine being deployed if you slew your aircraft. All right. So FMS. Oh, no, Jays, don't do that. Uh, right. Bring us back to the menu here. And that's all grand. So we're going to the Atsu. Let that load up. And over on this side, let's see. We're going to go nav on the IR, the Adirs, basically one to three. We're going to set these guys up. That's going to give us our internal uh, navigation. Right. Right. Overhead looks good for the moment. We'll come over here to our tablet. And we can see that we have the stairs. 
We've loaded up the crew and uh, we're going to be blasting off here now shortly. So that's our ground stuff. So if we go into my flights, we're going to import the flight directly from Simbrief. And uh, as I said, Baldonnel up to uh, Pevlovic. So that's now important. Imported. <laughs> important. Uh, mass and balance. This is going to be the weight of the aircraft. And we're going to plant it in. Uh, reference our sim brief. So we'll just uh, load it in instantly. <laughs> aircraft has been loaded. Thank you. And uh, now there's some important things here. If you want to copy some of the weights and balances that I'm going with. Um, I have cargo of 4,900 kilos. Payload of 6,500. And our estimated zero fuel weight is 50,000. 50. So we're light. Yeah, we're light. So uh, let me see here. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Zero fuel weight in pounds or kilos. You can change all this in the settings here as well. All right. So uh, panel states, leave that alone. Ground services, uh, that's all grand. If we go now to our departure, we're going to be using runway 28. It is dry. Flap configuration, we're saying optimum. I'm going to give it two. Uh, anti guys no. Packs will probably be on. We're going to sync. And we're going to sync the weather and we're going to calculate. So it's, these are our V references. Once we get up to 130 knots, we should be tickety boo. And it's going to give us information here at uh, the length of the runway and when we think we're going to get up out of it. All right. So let's come down here to our Mac do's. So into FMCG and on the right hand side, I'm going to keep working on my Atsu and see this flight in it. That's our flight initialization. I'm going to initiate data request. So that's going to pull all the information from the tablet and also Simbrief. So it's going to load in all my facts and figures. And there they are. Super duper, right? So they can live in there now for the moment. On this side, we're going to go in and make sure that our nav data is correct. It's active from the 21st of March up until the 17th of April. And from here, I'm going to hit the init page. Init, initialize. So the first thing we can do, we can align the IRS. So click on the button and we're going to pick up our lat here. That'll do us. And we should be able to align on reference. Uh, wait now. Can we not do it there? Oh, they're still aligning. Never mind. Right, we'll go into init request. And again, this is going to pull the information. Um, we've already done it from the Atsu. And it'll, it'll throw it all in here together, right? So you can see here now, flight plan, uplink. In it goes. Our flight number, we can manually put this in. So I'm putting in Firefly 235. That's my, my call sign. Uh, but you belt away with absolutely anything you wish. Cost index for this flight, it's as low as five. And the cruise flight uh, is altitude 380. And it's going to be minus 46 degrees up there. Now, can we align on this reference? Align on reference, thank you. Confirm the align and we should be good to go. So the IRS is now done. We'll go to the winds page and we're going to request the wind data information. That's going to help us with our VNAV and our speeds and our climb profile and all the jazz. So all is looking good. Wind request, that looks good to me. Uh, next phase, that's in our descent. We're looking good. Right, onto the next page. So now we have more information we need to pop in. So we can see our fuel, right? So we can do a couple of things. We can pop all this over to the MACDO. We're going to send this to the MACDO. Uh, and there's a page I'm missing, and Murph. So that's our takeoff data put in. So if I go back into here, Send this to the MacDo as well. And here should be all my information. Why aren't you going in? I think that's right. Ah, here we go. So that's all in there now. So we can see now our trip time, um, our alternate time. It's giving us an alternate thing back into uh, Glasgow or Edinburgh or something. Glasgow, right? Uh, if things go wrong, we'll have to turn around. Uh, but at the moment, we're looking good. So uh, this is all good. So we're going to go into our flight plan. So our fuel prediction is all pretty good, right? Uh, flight plan itself. So Dublin, uh, Baldonnell, more importantly. So we do have a departure. Uh, it's going to be runway 28. So we'll just put in runway 28. And the there's no SID that we need to use. It's pretty much direct. And we're going to be turning out over Dublin. So you can see where it ends there, right? Uh, we'll leave that disco in there for the moment. Let's come down to our uh, arrival. Now, we could leave this kind of open in case the wind changes, but we've just checked the TAF. It's not due to change, right? So we're going to plan an arrival um, for 01, which is going to be the ILS for 01. And the star it's giving us is the uh, the Basel 3 November, which is this fella right here. And there's no transition I can see. So we're going to insert all of that. So all we're left now is a disco over Dublin. Discontinuity, meaning that, you know, there's a waypoint missing. We can cancel this. So all we need to do is click clear 
and that should get rid of that and insert. Now we have a full linked plan the entire way. And if we wanted to check this, once our stuff come alive here now, right, uh, we'd be able to see the plan. So you can pop out these, press and hold the right alt key and then click on your mouse. That'll appear the develop here for you. If you wanted to zoom out, well, you can see now where my full flight plan is. And then if I cycle through the flight plan itself, it'll follow along where all my waypoints are, meaning I can see the entire route just to make sure I know exactly where I'm going before I leave. All right, so that looks good to me. Go ahead and clear that. And uh, we'll put it back onto the arc page and we're just waiting on our nav data to come in. Now, do we have an IRS align time? So they're still in align mode. Now, why can't I see status? Okay, so it'll be aligned in three minutes. All right. So we'll continue on with our flows here. We're going to reset our barrel. Local ground is 3012 in our Q and H. Uh, sorry, our Q and H is 1020. So altimeter is uh, 30.12 inches of mercury or 1020 hectopascals. So we'll go with that one. And we'll keep this divil over there as well. Um, initial altitude, so the transition altitude out of Dublin is going to be 5,000 feet. We'll put in an initial climb of 5,000 feet. Uh, what else do we need to do? Our speeds, we'll put that in in a moment. Constraints can go in. LS can go on here as well. And we'll continue down here, getting our aircraft set up. So, our flight plan looks good. I'm now going to go into the performance page. And our V speeds have been, as I said, taken off from the other side. Flaps are going to be 2. Uh, flex is going to be 55. So let's see any kind of, you know... Is there any D rating going on? Thrust reduction, eh, we're not too bad. We need to apply pretty much full power on this. That's what we're going to need, right? Uh, Ali had a CTD, I don't believe you. Irish Gav, good to see you. He says a big mess up by Microsoft over the marketplace. What, why did you say that? What happened? What happened? Uh, as long as Murph stays around 250 to, two, to 300, you should be fine. Yeah, uh, packs off departure. Uh, lean forward, Dougal, right? It's, it's going to be one of those. So I'm fairly happy with this is all set up here now. Uh, we're going to keep it on the flight plan page. And uh, from this neck of the woods, I'm going to start up my APU. So we put on the master switch. And uh, let me see. We can go now and tell the doors to close and the stairs to be removed. Also got our cargo doors closed here as well. So we're going to power up the APU. Doors open. We're going to click on start. And if you have a listen outside, well, you'll hear the APU hopefully fire up. Isn't it very good? The sounds of this thing are amazing. Jamie Coyle, good to see you. We're on the Southeast Asian server. Uh, I'm just going to wait until I've kind of taken off before we turn on multiplayer. Uh, right, okay, so APU's coming up. TCAS standby, company message, IRS alignment in one minute. Let's go over here to our company message. Receive messages. Should be our load sheet. Uh, accept that. Passengers 20 uh, plus 5 crew. That'll do. And our weights and balances are there as well. That looks good to me. Uh, what else do I want here from the aircraft? So while we're waiting, we can turn on some lightage. Make it all look very pretty in here. Do you know what I mean? So turn these fellow Roonies up. One over there. And we can get our main panel floodlight. Integrated light and turns on here. Go ahead. Lock the cockpit door. Transponder. We'll leave it alone for the moment. We'll go TA. We stick it on. Bit of a floodlight down here just so we can see what's happening. Now we make sure that our controls are working, which they are. Ground spoilers. Leave those alone for the minute. And the rest will come up when we're starting up the aircraft itself. So APU is now available. And we can see that our map is activated. Our IRSs are aligned. So our APU is available. We're going to activate the APU bleed. Bleeds are running. That'll turn on the packs. Give it a moment. We'll have a listen. And what else do we need to do here now? We're going to remove the ground power or the external power. So I'm going to turn that off. We're now on our own aircraft's power. We're burning fuel as it is. And our packs have just started to fire up there. So I'm going to remove the GPU. Remove the chocks and cones. And we don't need to worry about pushes or any of that. We just start up pretty much where we are. Alright. So nav. Uh, upgrade. Okay. That's grand. That's grand. Uh, so next up is going to be an engine start. So 
Tell the passengers. Sit down there now, good and quiet. Beacon light coming on. And we're going to go for a start on the engine. So, dom light off. And let's have a look here now. Okay, all should be well. We're going to go ignition start. And we're going to power up engine two. And we're going to give this a listen. So you can hear the packs now turning off automatically. This Firefly Air flight. Just a reminder about handling. Who's that? Small bags may be kept underneath the seat in front of you. And all other items that you snook on board and feeling very smug with yourself. Well done. He sounds Hold dreamy, that lad. Into an overhead lock. The sounds of this machine, lads. Beautiful. Dreamy, also nightmarish, right? Okay, so starter has now disengaged. Engine 2 is available. And we're going to go over to the left engine, or engine 1, and listen to the dog bark. Oof, oof. Your man is talking absolute, I don't know what, but she'll listen. We better turn on the old uh, intercom. ...with red exit signs. In the event of an emergency landing, lights on the floor will illuminate to guide you to the exit. Or you could just follow me. There's no way any of you are beating me off this plane. There's two doors at the front, one left and one right, two doors at the rear, one left and one right, and there are four overwing exits covering the centre of the cabin. In the event of a sudden change in cabin pressure, an individual oxygen mask will be lowered automatically in front of your face. Once you've stopped screaming, pull the mask down fully, place it, secure it with the elastic band, and breathe normally. Engine one available. You must attend to your own mask first before attending to your favourite child, or your husband, who's definitely screaming louder than you. That's two. be honest, only those of you that actually paid the extra forty nine ninety nine going to get oxygen anyway. There is a life jacket in a package under your seat. To use it, you should take it out of the package, put the jacket over your head, the long strap on, strap on, strap, oh, <clears throat> the long strap on the back should be brought to the front, hooked and pulled very tight. Right, here's you now, you big Aegis. Right, engines have now been started. We've turned on our weather system. Uh, APU is still active. We can now turn this off. So we're going to go master switch to, well, turn off the bleeds first. Give it a moment to cool down uh, and then we'll switch it all off. Uh, while we're sitting here, all our logo lights can be turned on. Our runway turnoff lights can be put on. Strobes go to auto. Taxi light is going to be activated. Uh, no smoking and seatbelts are set to auto. Uh, integrated lights are looking good overhead. Everything on the overhead, to me, uh, it looks tickety-boo. Uh, we look at our main panel here now. This is all looking tickety-boo. Uh, we put in an initial 5,000. I am going to go to managed speed mode uh, because we do have to make a tricky left-hand turn just after wheels up. 130 is what we're rotating on. So I'm just going to put in a speed here of about 190 knots and I think all should be well in the realm. I've set my auto brake to maximum in case we need to have, you know, ah, no, and the rest of it should be grand, lads. The rest should be grand. Right, APU coming off. Uh, master switch off. That's looking good. We are fully disconnected now from the ground. Thank you. And a quick check outside before we go. Would you look at the state of it? It's only gorgeous. Okay, right lads. <laughs> Here we are. The Bremen 2024. It's time to get going. Oh, do you know what I need to do? Take off configuration. Auto signs max. Signs are on. Vanessa and Caroline sit down there now. And we'll start taxiing. Jesus, don't wing strike the number three operations wing. 
<laughs> They'd go friggin' nuts! Right, we'll take our time here now as we taxi. Cabin crew seats for takeoff. We're getting out of Dodge. <laughs> right! Brilliant! Think I'm sorted. Hello? I think the cabin is secure. How much is this plane? I think it's like 50 bucks. I think there is no question at all when it comes to the airliners currently available in Microsoft Flight Simulator, the Phoenix A320 is at the top of the pecking order. It just is. In terms of the features, the EFB, um, how good it looks, how good it sounds and how good it flies, absolutely incredible. They've done an incredible job here. Right, so we are going to be approaching an active runway. This stage, light them up. Light them all up. Strobes on, the whole shebang on. Down to a little transponder. Uh, turn you on as well. T-A-R-A. -A. Traffic alert, radar alert. This is all looking good. Uh, terrain on, why not? Turn the terrain on. This is exciting. Could you imagine back in 1928, early bells, five o'clock in the morning, the lads climbing into the cockpit of the Bremen. They were out for a couple of pints in the officer's mess the night before. And here's an interesting factoid. The officer's mess in Baldonnell, the bar, the main bar for the officers, is actually called the Bremen. And if you notice on our Discord, that's why we have the Bremen bar. You see? Is it all links together, lads? Yeah, brilliant, do you know? So uh, anyone who's new here, by the way, uh, do be sure to check out our uh, Discord server, exclamation point Discord. That's where we hang about when we're not on a stream. Most of the time, people just take the Dennis Hickey out of me. But listen, I've, I've learned to accept it. Now, I need every last drop of runway here now. So, easy does it now, Josephine. Right. I mean, that looks gorgeous. I'm as crooked as crooked could be, but that's okay. And even my wheels are left sideways. It's grand. Right, friends. Oh, yes. What are we going to do? We're going to panic. Now, do we have everything turned on that we need? I think we do. I think we do. Uh, we're looking good here. We're looking good over there. Turn off that light. We don't need it. Okay, friends. To infinity and beside. Power coming in. And Toga the Bejesus. And we're moving. 40 knots. Speed alive. SRS. Oh, the wind already, Jesus. Easy now. 120. 130. Jimmy sleepy nighty snoozy snooze. V1. Rotate. Oopsie daisy. Positive way to climb. Gear coming up. Look at the wind! Look at the wind! Yeah, baby! Alright, let's see what we're going to do now. Here's 180. Start our turn now, you devil. Hello there. Hello there. Watch your speed. First notch of flaps in. We're going to manage speed. Autopilot, engage. Altitude is going to go up to 5,000. We'll clear ourselves up to niner. So far, so good. Uh, Srap, good to see you, man. Wing stretch and marbles tightened. Yes. Windage is right. There's Western Aerodrome just under the nose here, lads. As uh, we kind of turn right out towards Dublin. There is Dublin Airport, Dublin City, just where the sun is starting to shine on now. Beautiful. Activate the multiplayer goodness. This is going to be absolutely freaking hilarious. Look at that for a departure. Beautiful. Look at this, lads. Casement Aerodrome in the background. My word, imagine if they had this sort of capability back in 1928. I mean, could you imagine? Uh, 
we're looking good. So we're saying 5,000 feet. We need to go to standard now. We're going to increase our altitude. Let's go all the way up to 380. At this stage, flaps are fully in. We can increase our speed. Let's go to 20. And once we pass 10,000 feet, uh, we're unrestricted after that, right? What's the caution? Nav barrel reference discrepancy. Standard, standard, there we go. Okay, we can uh, retract the landing lights. We'll keep the, everything else on until we get to 10,000. As we fly out over Dublin, there will be a left-hand turn. Ah, look at this. So what we're going to do now, Fireflies, well, anyone who's flying along with us, if you're on the Xbox, press 1, if you're on the PC, press 2, and if you're here because it's Friday and Jesus, well, you press number 3. Hello, Fireflies. Welcome to the Flying Circus. We live stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 1900 Zulu time, right here. departure everything seems okay so flight level 130 go ahead and get these uh lights off passengers are all okay nothing screaming or shouting or roaring at us we seem to be all right lads i say we seem to be all right now the wind is hitting us 66 knots across the nose lads hitting us from the side let's have a quick look here in navigraph so we just passed the dublin via war we're now tracking you all the way and uh, this is going to bring us over Donegal, look. We should get a visual of Donegal if the weather's nice. Uh, and then it's out into the... Uh, whose FIR is that? Shanwick. Into Shanwick, lads. So uh, we're very much all on our way. So we have a lot of people flying with us. This is brilliant. Will this achievement be on over the weekend? Yes, Ali, 100%. An ambitious two for me. Brilliant. Uh... We've had a good few people. Let me see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 20, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, so what are you all flying in, lads? Tell us. Tell me your craft for this evening's flight. I see a Honda Jet, an F-117, Longitude, fly-by-wire, uh, a Griffin, Command Captain Sickbag. Ryan is in the uh, Phoenix. We've got an F-16 from Gregor, fly-by-wire 320, Command Sai, A320, brilliant. Phoenix, uh, a 330 by Tarnish, Command Yourself. Uh, Dr. Notham is in the Hawk. Nightstep is in a Sabre. Oh, nice. I took my Honda... 
So when the VTech kids uh, kicks in, hold on to your Crocs. Brilliant. Uh, Night step is in the saber. Oh, excellent choice. Longitude. F15. Phoenix. 737. Nice. Uh, Larger life's in the Innie Bills A320. Nice. Uh, 737 800. Uh, an A330 900 for the classic Aer Lingus as Nighthawk. Beautiful. Um, Wimus on his own flight is in the King Air. Nice. Fly by wire. Uh, and he's Forza tonight. Not sure how many words. We'll play it by year. We'll play it by year. Dinner Riley's in the ERJ. Look. Flying a laptop to try and finish off me display. Oh, Jesus. Behave. Brilliant. Catbot's in the 7 3. Hemingbird, thank you very much indeed for the bits. You're very kind. Wow, look at the sun departure here. Isn't this gorgeous? This is live weather. Now, it's not live time. Uh, it's live weather, but isn't this beautiful looking? Gorgeous. So we've just passed flight level 2-0. We're still climbing. Speed now, 220. Let's bring this all the way. In fact, we'll go managed. Let the FMC take over, or the Mac do. 279, and then we'll go into the, uh, the Mac neck of the road. So the wind, 85 hitting us. It's quite kind of windy over here. Now it gets, obviously the higher you get, it gets way more windier, right? Um, and this is what the lads would have had to face, right? I mean, the prevailing winds, well, they come in over the Atlantic from the west to the east. They come across it, meaning that the lads have to fly against it. Jamie Coyle is in a 717. Nice. Crazy Core is flying long haul, Bangkok to Bahrain. Nice. I don't make them. <laughs> There's stuff happening. Uh, Flipper Alloy has subscribed tier one for 30 months, starting a friggin' hype train. All aboard. Thank you very, very much indeed, my guy. Exceptional support, as always, uh, from the Fireflies. Thank you very much. All your settings are borked. Muse, what's happening? Tell me. How does it make you feel? What's the story, man? It's all borked. Uh, Jesus, look at the view out the front here. Look. Look at the state. So Dr. Nothum in close formation. Oh, that's gorgeous looking. Look at the state. Now, hopefully to Jesus, I don't get any issues. You know. It's early days yet, lads. The dreaded, let's pause the same every couple of seconds. But for right now, it seems to be behaving. Look at Sean Dale and Toto, look. Close formation flight. I'm loving it. I never turn on me chrono. What a muppet. Right. We're grand, lads. I think we're grand anyway, right? And if we're not sure, we'll blame someone else. So the 1920s, well, they were filled with technical records, especially in the field of aviation. The German aviation uh, pioneer, um, how do you pronounce this name? We'll try it. But it's basically Heinfred Gunther Fier von Hunfeld, who was a press officer for the Nord Dutch Lloyd at the time, he was actually committed to seafaring. Uh, he played an important part in this. You see, von Hunfeld had the idea for a foolhardly suicide mission that would take him in an airplane from Ireland to America without a stopover. His destination was to be New York on the east coast of the United States. From there, Charles Lindbergh already succeeded in crossing the Atlantic when he flew all by himself from the Big Apple to Paris in 1927. Does anyone know the name of his airplane? Sai Murray, thank you very much indeed. Gifting a tier one sub. Cheers, man. Thank you very much indeed. Level one of a hype train. Can anyone name the plane? What did they fly in? I'll give you a clue. It wasn't Leitrim. You just know your history. Very good. Uh, the Spirit of St. Louis, which is actually in The Sim. And if I'm right in saying, lads, didn't, um, oh, what was his name? Was it In the Blue Yonder? Did he, didn't he fly that mission in The Sim? The Spirit of St. Louis, New York to Paris? Yeah, it was a Ryan NYP. Yes, yes. Charles Lindbergh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, so, uh, the flight, which had previously cost 29 people their lives in, in similar uh, endeavours, was considered a hopeless venture. The strong westerly winds and long distance were simply too much for the aircraft of their time. So, with that said, um, a plan was hatched. 
And the idea was there was actually prize money up for grabs here as well. Uh, if you could fly your aircraft across the Atlantic Ocean, uh, well, you would have received £10,000, uh, which in, that's millions in today's money, right? So uh, that was the mission, wanting to fly across the Atlantic Ocean. So on the 13th of April, 1928, three European adventurers touched down safely on a barren Canadian island 36 and a half hours after leaving Ireland. But their original destination was New York. What happened during this pioneering flight? They were blighted by poor weather. The German crew, Gunter von Hunfeld, a wealthy but frail aristocrat, a pilot, Captain Hermann Kohl, attempted an east-to-west crossing in 1927, but they had to abandon because of dangerous meteorological conditions. They got as far as uh, they got out to sea and had to turn back again. Again, in 1928, with the addition of the charismatic Irish Major General James Fitzmaurice to the crew, and ready to attempt the crossing, weather conditions forced a delay of 17 days before the go-ahead was actually given. Right? So, uh, the history, right? We'll learn about the lads now in a minute, but the history basically was... Um, where are we here now, right? So, where's my button? So, uh, Gunter van, or Gunter von Hunfeld, he was an aristocrat, right? He knew royalty, this lad. And he, through his whole life, he was kind of, you know, fighting off different illnesses and all this sort of stuff. Well, he worked for the, uh, the shipping company, the German shipping company. And they had two massive vessels, one called the Bremen and one called the Europa. And they, you know, by sea, hauled freight all over the world. Where he met Hermann Kohl, the pilot. Well, Hermann Kohl at the time was working with Lufthansa. And in fact, he was one of their chief uh, pilot instructors. Hermann Kohl being able to fly at night time. Nighttime flying back then, well, you may have seen some of the sceneries already in the sim. They would literally fly by ground lit torches. They'd light fires at different beacons. That's how they used to navigate on some of the very old uh, mail runs. These guys kind of pioneered the nighttime flying. Um, what was interesting there, because you had Hermann Kohl, who's doing that uh, on the German side of the house, well, then you had James Fitzmaurice. Who originally started off in the Royal Air Force. That's that's where he started. Royal Flying Corps, the Royal Army Air Force, whatever it's called. But he was with the RAF originally. And he got some great experience Hello, flying aircraft. And he too was pioneering nighttime flying over in England. Yeah, he since came back to Ireland. He got a job with the Royal Flying Corps, then later the Irish Air Corps. And um, just a highly skilled pilot. You know, so they were of they were of equal status in terms of their capabilities of navigation, nighttime navigation, celestial navigation, and of course flying aircraft as well. Edson, welcome in. I'm so smart. I'm not reading this from a sheet of paper at all, Edson. No, not at all. I remembered it. You know. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Twenty one months, man. Cheers, man. Great to see you. So, um, give the aristocrat who's involved in the logistics side of moving freight and had the contacts and everything else, well, he needed to buy some aircraft. And, well, Junkers, well, they supplied aircraft, of course, to Lufthansa. Lufthansa had their chief pilot, this Herman Kohl, and that's how they got to meet each other. And, uh, well, they needed to fly from somewhere. When they flew from Bremen, it was too far. Uh, they had two aircraft, the Europa and the Bremen. The Europa had an issue and uh, had to make a forced landing, got damaged. The Bremen got a little bit further, but the weather became too much, it had to turn back. So the lad said, listen, if we fly all the way from Germany, all the way across, we, we need to shorten the gap here a little bit. So they said, right, let us go to Ireland. And they did. Now, Ireland at the time, Ireland had just kind of gained its independence uh, from Great Britain. And um, a lot of the infrastructure when it came to aviation, well, it was there from um, from the British, right? I mean, Casement Aerodrome was built by them, uh, Collinstown, which is now Dublin Airport. These were all former, um, you know, British air bases, effectively, right? There was even one out in Talla. And you knew that. They actually had one out in Talla. Uh, but anyway, so they said, right, be Janie then. Uh, we, need, uh, we need to fly from Ireland. 
So they, uh, they got onto the Irish government. Hey, can we do an L flight there, you know? And, uh, well, uh, yes, you can, but I'm going with you. Huh? Who are you? Morris. James is Morris. I'm going with you. And with that, they hatched a plan. So the the crew um, was now a, a three crew, three guys in the crew. So they chose Baldonnell as being the most suitable and at the time, probably the largest of all the different uh, airfields that were available. They looked at stuff off in Galway. They looked at stuff off in, uh, in uh, I think Mayo, they had something there. Uh, but no, Baldonnell was to be the place. So the, the run up to this, you know, they would have sent out uh, supplies and Lufthansa would have sent out engineers. They would have been Junkers engineers working for Lufthansa at the time. Uh, and they came out to Baldonnell. And James Fitzmaurice, he was actually, he lived in one casement aerodrome. Uh, that's where I lived. He, I, I lived in the house that he did. How nuts is that? Like, how mad is that? I didn't know that as young fella. But there you go. Lived in the same house. Um, but anyway, uh, the lads, of course, were stationed in Baldonnell. Uh, and when they flew the Bremen over, when she arrived, um, they spent a couple of days on, on base, on the camp. And as I said, they had to, uh, they had to pay a local farmer to knock down a bit of the wall at the end of the grass strip because the runway was quite short no different than what we had here today ourselves taking off so they had to do that right Dougal cost index was five uh, I was about to get six cans of spray today but when I got back I realised I picked seven up brilliant brilliant Um, so what we now we're cruising here at 250 knots for the moment. That's only because we're still over Irish airspace. So that speed will pick up here now in a moment. Uh, what are we at here? Look. We're nearly at our cruising altitude. We are way up here, lads. Sweet lamb of Jesus. We're high up. Beautiful contrails. As we overfly. We're heading out now. We're over, I would say, kind of... We're near the Claddy back road. We're near Claddy. And this is all Donegal now. Right? So we're over Donegal at the moment. So uh, the aircraft itself, that's where the, the bit of fascination lies in. Because when we compare, um, you know, a Junkers W33 to what we have now tonight, the Airbus A320, you would be surprised, but there's quite a lot of heritage shared between them. They were both at the pretty much top end of technology in terms of its capability, right? Its navigation systems, the airframe, the materials used in it, and also the comfort levels. I mean, you compare the W33 to what they had in the Ryan NYP. And I don't just mean from the visibility. I mean, you can see nothing out of the front of the Ryan. There was a small little hole you'd look out. Yeah, I'm going the right way. You had to look out the side. In the Junkers, you know, you could look straight ahead. It was a tricycle landing gear configuration, but it didn't actually have a wheel on the back. It had a skid. So when you see reference photographs of the Bremen, it had this big, massive kind of, you know, double wheel setup on the back. That was designed to uh, fall, drop. Once the aircraft would take off, once the tail would, would raise, well, then that little cart of two wheels, they're like giant bicycle wheels, really, really narrow. And like all the spokes, that would just roll and, you know, take someone out of it. You know, or come into a tree or something. Um, but it didn't actually have a landing uh, wheel on the back, right? Toto had a CGD. Jesus, lads, the CTDs tonight are in force. Touch wood now. Don't worry. By all means, just boot back in, lads. All will be well in the realm. I hate that with the sim. It goes grand and then suddenly it doesn't. But look, I do have JoinFS up and running. If anyone is flying on, as I said... If you're on uh, a different platform, if you're on P3D or X-Plane, jump on in. If you want, maybe fly with multiplayer turned off. When you resume your flight, stick with um, JoinFS until maybe a little bit later on. Just see how you're getting on. All right, see how you're getting on. Well, how much in the MiG-29? Beautiful. So looking at the A320 wing, let's just have a look at the wing there, right? And we know these kind of the fins or the sharklets or the right the, the the fins on the wing and what they were designed to do right uh well it, it'll shock you right but the uh the yunkers actually had something very very similar and you might be saying what are you talking about murph well i'll show you look so here we have right this is a this is a great bit of uh great bit of stuff 
how do you hide that now there we go so what we have over here uh, now it's all in german and you know my german wouldn't be as good as your irish do you know what i'm saying so uh we'll, we'll have a look at the aircraft itself so this is kind of, it looks like the Haynes manual. Do you remember the Haynes manual? Brilliant, right? But you can see kind of the makeup of the aircraft and it featured wing tips. See the tips on the wings? You're talking engineering from 1927. Now what is pretty cool, if you look at this, uh, at the style and the shape of the fuselage, and we'll talk about that kind of galvanized material in a moment, but if you look at the shape of the aircraft, well, we do have some Junkers available in the sim. Most notably, we have the local legend being the Junkers JU-52. But we also have, I think it's the Junkers 9 is in there as well, right? So this sort of tear away uh, view of the uh, of the aircraft, right? But we can see, so we have our main engine at the front and you can see the landing gear down here, right? In the wings, again, very modern, you had fuel tanks built into the wings. At the time, that wasn't very... Uh, that was not normal, right? Usually they had the fuel tank at the back and it'd work off a whole load of different pumps and, and all this sort of stuff. W13, thank you, Viper Strike. A W13, right? Towards the rear of the aircraft, this is what we're saying, it didn't actually have a tail wheel. It had what was called a skid plate. They were called a skid plate, usually made out of wood, right? And uh, as we kind of, we'll ramble down here. Uh, zoom out now, you devil it. So this is the profile view of the Junkers W33. So you can see it from the front. I mean, it's it's a it's a very beautiful airframe, right? Again, you have the the wing tips there, and they weren't for show. I mean, this was the early days of aviation, and uh, you know, Junkers were like, "Hey, this this kind of works. This works." Also, the style of the wing. Biplanes were all the rage back then. You know, the monoplanes not so much. These should have been biplanes. Uh, and if you look at the style of the wing, and if you look at the, the wing of the JU-52, it's the same sort of layout. This sort of, you know, straight but swept, it's 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 pretty pretty beautiful. So we have some of the uh some of the information here, right? Um so the motor. Now, as I said, I can't read German, but we'll go down into it. The flight control surfaces. This was very much done by cables and pulleys. There was no flyby wire here. So the rudders and the uh, flight controls were all connected to various pulleys and gears and all that sort of jazz. And they controlled the ailerons out in the wing. They controlled the elevator towards the back. And the uh, the rudder pedals was your stabilator or your rudder. That's what it controlled, right? So that's how it was all put together. And this sort of rudimentary design, well, that, that lived on an aircraft Way up to the 50s. It's the same idea. Cables, right? Cables. Then we look at the instrument panel. Now, this is kind of mad, right? Because, you know, radio ray or radio navigation and, you know, VOR and all this sort of jazz. Forget it. Didn't exist, right? So they went by compass. Having a compass in the aircraft was considered, whoa, this thing is like next level, right? Um, Your flow button's got deleted as well. Jesus, Muse, you're having a bad night. You're f How did it do that? Muse, do you know what it sounds like? It sounds as if you got into the sim with it not syncing your profile. Do a full restart and you should be tickety-boo. As in, turn off the computer. So we can see here some various things. We have fuel flow. We have engine temperature, RPM. Air speed. Altitude. There was a vertical speed. Um, what else did we have in here? You had uh, a primer. You had mags. Like, you had taps. These were taps that you moved as opposed to lovely electrical switches. Do you know what I mean? Like, just look at some of the instruments back then. And you compare that, of course, to some of the modern stuff we have today. Uh, right? The instrument panel is showing the airspeed indicator on top and the turn and bank. So we'd, ha we'd call it a turn and slip, right? But they had a turn and bank indicator. It also had a remote compass indicator. The climb descent instrument was on the right under everything is a large uh, inclinometer. You're going up. No, you're going down. And how that worked it was almost like a spirit level on the front of the aircraft. Same idea. The nose is pointing downwards. You're going down. Not necessarily as accurate as our vertical speed. Remember, you didn't have these kind of, you know, the, um, oh, what are they called? They're like the static ports outside the aircraft. 
never block them, never touch off them, right? So the compass, this is fascinating, how the compass works, right? So uh, the compass had to be freestanding. And you'll see, that, you'll even see this in the DC-3, which came out about 10 years after. Um, it, it, it was kind of, you know, held away from everything. So, we could, you know, the instruments could operate freely without being, like, bolted on to, uh, bolted onto something. Fascinating stuff. And, like, when it came to the design of building the aircraft, like, here, we can see the lads here in 1928, back in Berlin. Uh, and here's the crew. There be the buys. Now, the fuel system, this was, this was what was, like, this made the aircraft, like, holy moly good. Right? Do we have a speed command? Uh, try exclamation point info. So the idea was they would put fuel tanks into the wings themselves. And they also had tanks behind them. Uh, that's where uh, Von Hunfeld, with a cigarette in his mouth, would be pumping the fuel from the tanks in the back directly into the fuel tanks into the wings. Mad stuff was done back then, right? But you get an idea here, look. So this is actually showing you a cutaway of the wing and the fuel tanks inside it. And then all the various pipes that go into a pump the pump was hand operated and then they were felt up through the filters and then off into the engines a cutaway section of the wing so see where these gold plates are they're the fuel tanks or some of them at least that's mad isn't it absolutely mad and that's on the far side The fuel tanks inside the aircraft. So you can see now, this is actually a great photo because um, where Gunter von Hunfeld, he would sit in the back. That was his kind of spot, right? And then you'd have the two pilots up front. So you had the pilot, uh, Herman Cole on the left, the navigator, James Fitzmaurice, on the right. And how they communicate, it'd be, a le it'd, be, it'd be worse than this. Hello? And are we nearly at the destination, yeah? Huh? You know, you couldn't hear. Um, so they used to pass each other notes. And there's actually, they, they still exist. They, they have notes in Baldonnel, the stuff gone down to Shannon, and of course they have all uh, stuff in uh, Germany as well, right? When it comes to the, uh, <laughs> you know, your, your, your charts of uh, aircraft performance, takeoff power and all this sort of stuff, right? Nuts. Now the engine here was fascinating. Flugmotor was the Junkers und L5. The L5 engine. That was the engine that powered this entire aircraft. Single engine operation going out across the Atlantic Ocean. Were they absolutely mad? Were they mad? Right? Single engine. ETOPS needs twin engine. It, that's even to today's standards, doesn't it? Or that's why we have ETOPS. You know? No radio for sure. So, uh, this, these are pictures, of course, when the Bremen came back. There's a great story there how they actually got the Bremen back to, to Germany, where it's currently on display to this day in uh, the Bremen airport, right? So this is the uh, the Neud Deutscher Lloyd Bremen. So they had two vessels. Remember I was telling you, you had the Europa and the Bremen. How cool is that, right? Now, let me see. Uh, where are we looking at here? So the, here's the buys. Here's the lads in Baldonnell. Uh, so here is Gunter von Hunfeld. That's him there on the left. James Fitzmaurice. That's him there in the middle. And Herman Cole. Well, that's him there on the right-hand side. Now, we will be learning about these three lads uh, in the next episode. Right? But I can tell you, each of them have a fascinating story. Fascinating story. How, how movies have not been made about this event or the events leading up to it. And like, how this hasn't happened yet. It'd be, a f it'd be deadly, right? Because the stuff, like, escaping POW camps, you know, uh, World War I action, uh, dealing with the friggin' Kaiser, there's all that stuff. It's nuts, right? Nuts. But uh, if we look at the background here with the lads, at the back of the aircraft, here's this mad landing gear setup for the tail. This sort of little carriage. Right? That was the idea. So these big wheels, they were connected to the aircraft, but the idea was as soon as the tail would lift, well, the weight and the force has now gone off it, but the carriage would disconnect and it, it just rolled to a gentle stop. And then the aircraft would go on without it. It wouldn't need it. But that created a bit of a challenge. So they used to carry spare wheels 
on board because, well, if they had to take off again. Mad, right? Why do you think they did that and not just used the skid plate at the back? Why would why would whales be a lot better than just like a lump of wood, a skid plate? Why do you think they were thinking, you know, we better add this to the aircraft? Anyone tell me? Any ideas? There's more than one reason, right? There's more than one reason for this. Have a think about it. Less drag, less uh, yeah, friction, yeah. So there's a couple of things. Look at the attitude of the aircraft first and foremost. It's not sitting back like this, right? It's sitting like that. How's that going to help the aircraft? So the centre of gravity is not towards the rear of the aircraft. It's actually quite level. Crabby one, exactly. Fuel. The, fu the weight of the fuel. You're, you're now kind of dispersing it. You're increasing the centre of gravity to have it as a more kind of stable area. Yeah? Shirley Dev, 100% improves visibility. Think about it. Look at the um, look at the front of the aircraft in this position. And if you look kind of where the cockpit is, as we zoom up here, right? Bear with me now. But the viewing point out of the cockpit, that's the little window you're looking at, look. Look how much of a friggin' nose there is so if the aircraft's like that, you're seeing nothing. You're seeing nothing. So it helped with improving their visibility. So we have fuel, we have the centre of gravity, friction, we have the reduced drag because the wings are no longer hitting the air like that. They're more, um, you know, they're, they're more grand, do you know? So well done you lot, you figured it all out. So that's why they'd carry them, right? Uh, now, we'll go on down here, because, as I said, my German is useless. This is Baldonnell back in the day, look. Ah, yes, brilliant. Right, look at the cut of it, right? So they took, see where the arrow is? That's a little arrow down there. So where the plaque was when we took off from casement, that plaque is where the aircraft started from, and it went through the hangars and then, woof, straight out. Straight out. But you can see the hangars back in the day, right? And if we look closely, right? So, and the gas thing is, lads, in Baldonnell currently, these hangars are still there. Now, they're, 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 funny enough, right? Um, so you know the way Jepson built Baldonnell? And you have, like, the churches there and the main square. But they're actually going to be uh, knocking down two hangars in Baldonnell soon. That's why they're moving the entire museum down to Shannon. Now, I've been chatting to the lads in Shannon. I need to get... Gibbo, we need to get down there and probably... Move, well, whoever wants to go, we'll do, a, we'll do a thing in Shannon, right? Soon. Uh, I'll try and get that organised uh, because they're moving all the stuff out of casement down to Shannon, right? We could actually plan a bit of a session down there. Think about it. Like, well, it's out. Yeah, we could. Anyway, um, this is Baldonnell back in the day and the married quarters are over here. Why gaff is there? Because that was built in 22, I think, right? Now, here's the Bremen in situ in Baldonnell. So, when the Irish saw this, they're holy mother of Jay, Right? Fascinating aircraft. And it probably was the first time they saw a German aircraft. Up until then, the Irish Air Corps were operating uh, former air, uh, uh, former British aircraft. I think the Gloucester Gladiator was there, the Swordfish, these sort of aircraft, right? So uh, there's the Bremen on takeoff. I see the way the, tr the landing gear at the rear, it's gone, yeah? So the idea would be, you know, the tail pops up, the wheels stop, and then off she goes. And then over here, this is it on taxi. And people lined up on either side to see this thing take off. They all thought they were nuts. They thought they were mad. Do you know? And this went off very early in the morning. 5.30 or something was wheels up. Right? And it was gas. Because, uh, well, the night before, they went out for a couple of pints. As you do. So this was uh, the route, look. And the drawings, right? So, from Baldonnell at 5.30, they passed Galway... At seven o'clock and they flew this direction Now you'll notice here straight away if you look closely well here's an issue they should have been turning left they should have been turning left but they ended up kind of going a little bit onwards because well the wind they had an issue with the engine they had an issue with some of the instruments right 
Um, Dreamy, sleepy, Jesus. nightly, snoozy, snooze. Jesus, that scared the crap out of me. Can't say we. Jesus, I need to turn that thing down. I literally jumped. Just as well I wasn't drinking anything. Jesus. So, <laughs> right. God above. Um, but yeah, it all went terribly wrong. So they ended up kind of, uh-oh. But then you, look, they did the, I like to call it the Murph maneuver. It's when they suddenly, but most abruptly, realised, oh Jesus, we're going the wrong way, immediately turn around. Right? That's where I get it from, lads. That's where I get it from. So you compare it to what we have in modern day flight going straight across the Atlantic. We have these uh, North Atlantic tracks, highways in the sky built for aircraft to cross the Atlantic Ocean. Well, this was long before any of that. Long before any of that. All right. So we'll get into more of this kind of next week and the week after uh, all about, you know, when the aircraft landed and what happened and who was involved and, you know, what sort of a hoolie was involved and all this sort of stuff. Uh, and also the stories behind it, because an awful, like, the, you talk about the savage history here, lads. Savage. This is beautiful, though. Let's, we'll show you this briefly. So this is the Bremen, the actual aircraft, uh, in situ now over in Bremen Airport in the museum. I've never been. I, I've never been there, and I, I have to be there because... This is a flight that, well, it interested me because, well, I knew the pilots, uh, the Air Corps pilots in 2003. Uh, um, you had Ralph James, station commander at the time, and you had Paul Kelly. I knew, I was a kid. They knew my dad. Dad worked with them. Uh, but I was just a kid. I used to play football with Paul. Do you know, when I was young flip. And I knew the lads, and I heard they were doing this adventure, and I was like, holy crap, like, this is huge. And, uh, like, the information I got, the information I have, even from ATC, both from the Air Corps and Dublin, uh, and they were telling us about the reenactment in which they flew in a King Air the King Air B-200, right? Or a Beach B-200. And the aircraft uh, was called or, or, you know, christened the Fitz, the Flying Fitz. But anyway, the Bremen aircraft itself, well, as you can see, it looks very tidy for an aircraft that flew across the Atlantic. Uh, well, they've they completely restored it. It's owned by the Ford uh, company. Ford owned the gadget, right? And uh, where is this now? I just want to scramble down. The aircraft for years was on display in, uh, I think it was Central Station or Penn State, one of those in New York. It used to be hanging out of the roof of the train station and just countless millions of people just walking by going, eh, it's a plane, not realising the significance it, it had. Crossing the Atlantic Ocean back then, from the east to the west, you, you don't do that. You go from west to east and you might make it. Don't forget, 29 people died attempting it. This significance, well, in terms of the reception that the lads got in New York, in the other, the other cities across the States, in Dublin and Ireland, down in Cork, over in, uh, in Limerick, over in Germany, Berlin and Munich, this thing was as, it, it, was, it was like on the scale of landing on the moon. This was on the same scale. This was off the friggin' charts. Oh my God, look what happened. Right. And OK, it could have been amplified a little bit more on the American side because you had here's a crew from Germany. And of course, this is 10 years after the, the you know, the Great War. So relations were always about, well, here's a chance to, you know, re repair and restore relations. And Ireland, of course, well, Ireland has a massive history with America. Sure, everyone in America, sure, they might as well be Irish. I mean, we all right, you know, Ireland invented America. Do you know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> but anyway. The, uh, the aircraft was then, uh, there was a petition to say, listen, can we get the aircraft back and can we display it in Germany? Yes, yes, you can. And look at the aircraft that they flew over. So the German Air Force flew a C-160 Transall from Bremen, across the Atlantic, to pick up the actual aircraft. And there's pictures here, look, there's your C-160. There's pictures here of the Bremen being loaded in the United States and it was flown all the way back. How friggin' cool is that? We have a C-160 there. So, like, we can absolutely reenact this flight. Jesus, your man's tyre was geeched. They had to lower the tyre look to get it in. And, look, here's the crew who flew it back look. Isn't that brilliant? That's so cool. When the Bremen got into Germany, and they started taking it out of the container, 
Right? And again, like, as I said, it sat over, um, it sat over the, uh, the train station. So it was all about taking the thing apart and getting it into, uh, getting it into position to be shown off to the public. And of course, you'd all the media, you know, fellas doing interviews. Yes, yes, great idea, yeah. Uh, and, you know, then you had the engineers talk about it. I'm almost certain uh, James Fitzmaurice used to go to like any ceremonies and anniversaries and all this jazz. He used to do all that. But look at them here with the aircraft now. They had the job of putting the aircraft back together. Like, do you ever watch those documentaries, Rebuilding Aircraft or like Rebuilding a Legend? Do you ever watch those? They're brilliant. But this is the same crank, right? All the parts they had to get. Clean them. Original parts. Did they have to manufacture new parts? The fuel tanks still in the wing. It's pretty cool, right? And you have this kind of, you know, the iconic Junkers, um, this skin, if you like, that goes over the aircraft. Is Bad Dog given out? Bad Dog, like, if it's not your thing, man, just go somewhere else. You know what I mean? Don't be that Egypt. Um, but they have this kind of corrugated metal design. And the idea was it made the aircraft extremely uh, structurally sound. It was tough, tough as old boots, this thing. And it also helped with the aerodynamics because um, the, the the galvanized area, the, the rounded sections, right, they would actually block where the rivets were. So, you know, you had these aircraft like the Spitfire was absolutely gorgeous. All the rivets, they were all kind of countersunk because the rivets would hit. They Parasitic drag, it's called. They'd pit, the air would catch it and slow the aircraft down, right? Uh, Duralanium or, or Duraluminum. Yes, that's exactly it, Super tight. That's exactly it. You know, Thank you, Hemingbird. You're back in the will. <laughs> um, but yeah, look, that was the engineering thinking back then. And, uh, you know, Junkers kept this style right up to today, would you believe? The Junkers Aircraft Company, um, they're, they're re-releasing, re-releasing um, some of these aircraft. They're rebuilding them, including the Ju-52, Modern Avionics. I think, is it, a, is it a PT-6 engine they're putting in it? But they're doing kind of, they're doing very new stuff, right? And, um, well, again, you can just see, look. Look down here by the landing gear. This is where the gear would have sat, right? So it's aluminium, with like, it's, it's aluminium that's strengthened, right? Strengthened. Do you see here now, does anyone know what these big round jokes are? These big round jokes, any idea what they're for or what they might do? Bearing in mind, a wheel goes on either side of that axis. Or axle. Axis. That's an axle, yeah? I don't have an idea what they are. Did you ever see them before? The shape, right? Um, will it have tree? Will it have tree? Must have been amazing to work on restoring something, yeah? Super Tie reckons shock absorbers. Maybe. What else could they be? And if they are shock absorbers, why that shape? That's got you stumped. We're doing something, right? Here they are in a different angle. Uh, if they were, you'd see they're on both sides. But they technically, technically, they should be on both sides, but they're not. They're only on one side. Uh, cut down drag? Kinda. Bad Dog says, Murph, uh, I'm not giving out. Friday nights used to be fun. Not, not all this. But sure, like, we've always done this. What are you talking about? Coil Springs. Yeah. Not really an exhaust. It, looking at it, you'd say, Jesus, it looks like an exhaust, right? And it's nothing to do with fuel. You know what I mean? So we'll get to it, right? We'll go back up to the blueprints, shall we? To identify what exactly that they are, right? Watch, wait and you see now, we won't actually say it. Airbag shocks. It's air anyway. Load you devil. Let that load for a second. How are we doing here? 
Uh, we're only at 240. It's because of our altitude. What are we doing over the ground? We've got to be booting it. Jesus. 406 over the ground? That's fairly lively, isn't it? Coming up on Ozbox. And then top of the sand. We're about 50 minutes out from top of the sand. Look at that, lads. Beautiful. Look at that. Love it, man. Love it. Yeah, we have a headwind. But we're going to turn now right. That'll kind of take some of that out of the equation, right? Uh, come down here, you, you devil, you. Where is this now? Put away section of the suspension. I should have it here somewhere. Dreamy, sleepy, nighty, snoozy snooze. That was nearly terrifying. Who did that? Kanzui! Jesus, the first time you really got me. Second time was just like, holy crap. Uh, right, now where are we? So, uh... Do 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 Now, let's have a look. I can't read the, um... I can't read German, unfortunately. Who is this? Adam Controls! You're very welcome in! Adam the Lit! Adam Major Lit! Welcome in, man! Thank you very much indeed for the raid! You join us as we have just passed over... Irish airspace, we're well into, uh, we're well into Shanwick at this stage. Give you a look. This is our current location, so we departed out of Baldonnell, tricky takeoff, just had a little bit of room, and, uh, well, out we go now. So we're coming up to a major waypoint, Ospox, and then it's going up to, uh, we'll have top of drop, and then we'll be going into Iceland. So you're very welcome in. Ashley is here, good to see you. James, good to see you. Welcome aboard. Uh, Limbic says, I'm here for everything aviation and having the crack. Uh, we know what we're about. Keep sharing the info. Thank you very much. It may not be for everyone, but you're like, meh. Uh, now, spending your points. Good man. You scared the crap out of me. Muse fan, good man yourself. Catching up. Brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Muse is now flying. That's great news. Congratulations on your continued success. Look at the wind hitting us, right? Uh, now, where is this bit of page? Oh, where is this gone? Uh, oh, don't tell me I closed it. Did I close it? I don't think it was, though. Ah, here we go. Okay. Now, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, so, you know Lionheart Creations? You know the developer Lionheart Creations? They've made a couple of aircraft already for uh, for Microsoft Flight Sim. But they made a friggin' Junkers W33 back in the world of P3D. Or maybe it was FSX. I need that in this simulator. So, I know Raoul knows... Lionheart Simulations. I've asked him really nice. He hasn't done it yet. But I need a Bremen in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Or indeed a Sobo. Will you make the thing with the yoke, please? It's an important plane. It is a local legend. Hello? First aeroplane to go that way. You just need to make it, lads. And then I'll fly it once, maybe. Because <laughs> it'll take 36 hours to do the flight. Do you know what I'm saying? It's a flight for Ali. Ali would do that before she even had to worry about how long it'll take. Of emotion. <laughs> right? Now, uh, what was I looking for? Oh, yeah. I'm looking for uh, the schematics of the wheels, lads. The wheels, right? So bear with me now. Uh, that's all grand. That's all grand. There's our turn coming in. Nice. Now, where is the... Uh, a wheeled undercarriage was fitted. Conventional fixed undercarriage was used. Hinge across an axle connected to the two main wheels. Independent three-legged one. Uh, where is it now? Jesus, where is the thing? Let's have a look. There's a question now for all of us to find out exactly what it was. It's Ireland's local legend. It is. But it's the word, yeah. I'm trying to get the, uh, the, 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 there is a name for what it is, or for what it does. <laughs> Where is this now? Do, 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 do. 
So Yonkers today, a Yonkers A A50 Junior is being reissued. By the way, anyone is interested in uh, anyone interested in the Yonkers aircraft? MDA says, "Hope you're all well. How's the flight going? Departing in a little while. Didn't fancy 5 a.m. takeoff this morning. That's quite okay. Good to see you, Iron Ob. Good to see you. Half six. Welcome in. Uh, now, hang on. Let me find this. So the W33. Well, that's the Bremen. Let's have a look. I bet you I have it in a folder here somewhere. W33 blueprint. Yes. There's one. There's two. We're getting, we're getting closer now, lads. We're getting very close there now. Uh, Jay Booth, thank you very much indeed. Three months, man. Cheers. Right, now, where is this yoke I'm looking for? Two, three, and four. Uh, da, 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 da. Googling intensifies, lads. It's the very same what's on the JU-52, by the way. The very same, right? Here's a picture of the JU-52 landing gear. Same crack, yeah? Junkers re-releasing aircraft is a bit like what's happening with the Catalina. Are they re-releasing the Catalina? No way! I'm almost certain it's something to do with the brakes and suspension. Because it's an air, uh, it is an air system, yeah? Where is the... There we go. Landing gear struts. Yes. Where are we now? Can anyone name other famous Junkers aircraft? Junkers. Have a think about it, right? What other Junkers aircraft did they build that would be popular? Epic Fool, good to see you. Name some fellow with someone else's name. What's the crack? Epic, what's the name of them gadgets? If anyone knows, Epic Fool will know. He knows this sort of stuff, right? Um, let me show you a picture of him so you'll, you'll, you'll understand what it is I'm trying to say. Bear with me now. Goosh. Epic. On the Bremen and other Junkers aircraft. On the uh, landing gear. Now, for some reason, the Bremen only had one. These gadgets, they look like they're um, exhausts. They're not exhausts, but they look like it, right? A JU-88, yes. Uh, the G38. The G38. The F-13, yes. The JU-87. The Stuka. The Stuka was built by uh, by these as well. G-38 was huge. Junkers G-38? Junkers G-38. Oh, holy crap, that thing. Yes. What were they doing with a giant plane that big? That was nuts. So they had the, uh, the JU-88. And then they had the 87, which, of course, the Stuka. All sorts of harm was caused by that thing. But a fascinating aircraft. Fascinating. There's a matter getting caught here on this stupid name. Why can't I find it, lads? Uh, Junkers W33... Schematic? Uh, closer. We're getting close. Diagram? Junkers also made the... the right, did someone... Uh, does someone already say the A50? Paparazzi, yes, yes. The thingamajig, yeah, it's a thingamajig. A J1000. What's a J1000? Hmm. I'm just trying to get the... Uh, there it is there, look. Can we zoom in? Can we get higher? It's to do with the... Um, 
It's to do with the braking system. It's the braking system. Okay. No, doesn't like that. Uh, auto gyro. Oh, it wasn't that. First flight. Yes, yes. Out of production. Total production. Yes, yeah, okay. And you'd be, you'd be surprised to know who made them, right? Bosch made the brakes. So we're looking at a Junkers JU-52 So it's off the, it's off, it is part of the braking system, right? Uh, da, 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 da. Two fifty two diagram. Let's look at the diagram. So the braking system. Yeah, it's off the braking system. Nuts. Do, 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 do. Like you compare, <laughs> Jesus, you compare that, right? It's amazing that they're on the, uh, the JU-52 as well. It's amazing that you compare that to what we have now today with discs and, do you know what I mean? Like an air braking system and yeah, there would have been a coil in there I suppose as a backup. But it's, it's freaking nuts, lads. Look, the state. So this photo has them on both sides. That's okay, Epic. That's okay. So anyway, the aircraft completely fixed up and on display uh, in Bremen. And it's somewhere I absolutely have to go to. Because uh, to see the aircraft as it is, like just stunning, right? All the way back down to where we were. 38,000 feet, 240. Jays, we're doing all right here, aren't we? We're doing all right here. Look at the state. Now, where is it? So this is her back in Bremen. And it's not even included in the scenery in one of the in the uh, sceneries for Bremen. So you can see the museum, right? But they, don't, they didn't actually say, oh yeah, by the way, here's a, a model of the aircraft. Do you know what I mean? Here's the devil there now, look. How's your German, lads? Uh, part of the chassis that's what that says look at the wheels look JU-52 is flown during the war usually used an air start system interesting see the way it's only on one side look look at the wheels even they're like bicycle wheels and there you have all that material. Look at that galvanized stuff there, look. It's it's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. That's a big 10 for good buddy. It is only beautiful. So here it is. In 1998, it was put on display. And your man, you know, rang a bell. Hayden, give to the tier one sub. Thank you very much indeed, Hayden. Cheers, man. They were last year when Giffen was a kid, right? Where's Kahari when you need it? Kahari would know this answer. I'll find out properly next week. Don't worry. Out on display there. That's class, isn't it? Look at this big Jesus. So it was unveiled then to the public in 1998. Before they moved it then on up to the... Uh, that's a great picture there. Look, look at that, lads. And there was, there was, there was calls for it. Jesus, that's the size there now. A JU-52 versus the Bremen. Look at that. David and Goliath are what? Look at that. Some years in the difference, but like, Jesus. That's unbelievable looking. 
So that's in Bremen. They were putting it into the museum. And that's where it is there now to this day. I'd love to visit it. I, you know, I'd like to go over and say, have you any idea who I am? I'm the agent who pretends to fly this route. Uh, so this is back in casement. This is the, uh, this is what I was showing you here. Look, there's the, uh, the plaque in Baldonnell. Isn't that mad? One is smaller, one is further away. Uh, Epic sent me a thing. Dish. Dish. Ah, uh, no. Oh, you could be onto something there, Epic. How did you find that? <laughs> Yeah, I'll have a gawk at that, because the similar landing gear. Similar landing gear. Um, so yeah, so that's encasement. How mad is that, look? And that's where we were earlier on. And before the runways and taxiways and all that jazz were built, they just straight out that way. Mad. So the commemorative stuff, stamps and coins, all that jazz is there. There's the three lads. Gunter von Hunfeld. That's in Baldonnell, there's the Irish lads. That's years later. Herman Cole, he went off to fly absolutely mad crazy things, like proper test pilot, you know? Autopilot disengaged in the Phoenix and now it won't go back on. Autopilot disengaged in the Phoenix and now it won't go back on. Ah, oh, Jesus. Muse, you're having a terrible night of it. An absolute shocking night of it. How are we getting on now? Right, so we are currently doing well, well lads, we're doing well. Uh, Visual Dark, thank you for the follow. Isn't that on the, oh, the G1000, or the J1000? I need to check that down now in a second. Right, we're, we're kind of at the halfway point. Uh, we'll be at top of drop soon. So a Yunker's J1000, Ali, is it? Yes. A Yunker's J-1000. Was it a concept? Was it a real aircraft? Or was it a, a project? It was a project. Look at the state of that. Is that it, Ali? Yeah, Muse is going to have to take out his, uh, his anger. His anguish. But look at the cut of that! Jesus. Do you know what it's... It's not unlike the, um... Did Marchetti make one? Or Saveo? Didn't they? Didn't they do one of those? The only one... Or the real one that they were finding was the Horton. Maybe. That's like science fiction, that is. That's mad looking. Are they windows in the wings? I think they are. Looks like the copy is backwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like we've got we four engines. If you look at the design, right, it actually kind of makes a bit of sense. So you have an elevator at the front, and we've seen that on some aircraft. They're, what are they called on the um? What are they called on the... What's that aircraft called? I'm looking Canard, that's the one. Canard wing. Holy crap, it flew? Jesus, lads. That's nuts. Tail is on the front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's not flying away from us. That's flying towards us. That's absolutely mad. The Junkers J-1000? That's incredible. And it flew. Uh, Yonkers A60, brand new 2022, also looks nice. Yeah, so they, they were rebuilding... Um, they were rebuilding uh, some of the Yonkers aircraft. And they're going to feature modern engines, modern avionics, all that sort of stuff. Incredible stuff, lads. Absolutely incredible stuff. Where's my buttons? They're down here. Anyway... So the Junkers W33 was a German single-engine transport aircraft. The designer of the W33 was Hermann Pullman, or Pullman. 
It was aerodynamically and structurally advanced for its time in the 1920s, a clean, low-wing, all-metal cantilever monoplane. Like all Junkers designs from the J7 onwards, it used an aluminium alloy called duralanium structure which covered over the Junkers characteristic corrugated dural skin. The wings had the same span as the F-13, though the platform was a little different, and the length was the same as the F-13 FE. The fuselage was a flatter topped, or was flatter topped than the F-13, and the 228 kilowatt Junkers L5 upright inline water-cooled engine was also the same in the F-13 FE, although much more powerful than the BMW of the F-13A, giving improved weightlifting compared to that of the early model. The cockpit and undercarriage were of their time. The former enclosed two seats and the latter fixed and divided with a tail. Uh, the prototype W33 registered D921. It first flew as a seaplane uh, in 1926. Production began in 1927 and ran up until 1934. There was 198 production machines built. W33s were used by many operators across the world in the late 1920s and the 1930s. Deutsch Lufthansa had only four of these, which ran mail runs from 1929. Others used the aircraft as surveying aircraft and even crop sprayers. Later, the Luftwaffe used them as trainers. The W33 set numerous records, and one made the first east-west crossing of the Atlantic. A, uh, an AW33, much modified and sometimes referred to as a W34, established a world record altitude on the 26th of May in 1929. It was piloted by Willy Neunhofen. 41,800 feet. What? The Bremen belongs... Uh, to the Henry Ford Museum in Deanmore, Michigan, it's currently on display in a hangar at the Bremen Airport Museum, where it has been completely restored. So its general characteristics, a crew of two, but could hold three. Uh, capacity, cargo hold volume uh, was about 830 kilograms, or about 1,800 pounds of uh, payload. It was 34 and a half feet long. Its wingspan was 58 feet. Uh, its height was 11, 7 feet. The wing area 460 square feet, empty weight 2,600 pounds, maximum takeoff weight 5,500 pounds, the power plant of course the 228 kilowatt or 306 horsepower, the L5 six cylinder water cooled inline piston engine. Its maximum speed 97 knots, its cruise speed was 81 knots, its default range 540 nautical miles with a service ceiling of 14,000 feet. That's bad, isn't it? The Henry Ford Museum is quite a museum. We enjoyed it. Is it good? Have I missed top a drop? Jesus, don't say that to me. Uh... When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're going to see some serious shit. I may have missed it. Have I? No, there's top a drop there. Lads, Airbus pilots, am I right in saying that? Does that little gadget there tell me that is the top of drop? Jesus, look at the detail on that screen, look. Yes, yes it does. Grant. Should we tell them to make a flyable replica uh, of the Bremen? I'd love to see if, um... I'd love to see if someone in the sim could make one. Look at the detail on that. That's absolutely... That's just ridiculous, isn't it? That's ridiculous detail. Like, you can see the friggin... You can see the LED gadgets. The little lines of the... Look at that. You can actually see the grid line of the oak. That's incredible. Gorgeous. Beautiful. We got a Vulcan, a Gripen behind us as well. A an F-14 Tomcat is inbound. Ah, this is absolutely gorgeous, lads. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, what do we have here? Ah, yes, we have some information here. I'm going to show you this now, right? Uh, I let this play, but there's a bit of a documentary here now I'm going to show you, right? We won't all get too excited. Now, how do we show you this? I won't show it there. I'll show it over here where it's easier. Right, bear with me now. 
Uh, how do we do this now? For science now, lads. Uh, let me see. There we go. Here. And I'm going to add a gadget. Media. Bear with me now, we have a look at this, right? Right, can we hear that? We can. Only getting in one ear, that's odd. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why that that is, lads. I, I don't think I could change that, can I? Uh let's see here now. If I add a filter to that. Filter uh audio filter. Would it be an audio move? Oh. Right, how do we how do we fix this now? This is, has to be a filter. I am we're using actual science here. An expander? That's a big 10 for good buddy. Make it mono. How do we make it in mono though? Do you know what I mean? Expander. Oh, how do we put it in mono? Uh let's see here what we can do. So if we go in here, advanced, yes. And we're saying this, and we're gonna say mono. Right, try now. I think I fixed it. I think I fixed it, lads. Brilliant. Right. So, is that showing? I can't see my stream. It's up there, look. Right. Okay. Hang on. We're doing science. Uh, is now. Let's do a bit of tidying up now, Morphe. A bit of tidying up. These lads are actually sitting in the Bremen bar in Maldonado, look. Now, put them up there. This is live editing. Where we just get it, lads? I mean, how lucky are we, right? And for press play. I really think that if this brought tremendous credit to the Irish Air Corps, no Air Force in the world had a commanding officer who would achieve what he did. How's the audio? Does it need to go up or down? Are we okay? This is brilliant. Don't fall out of your chair. I nearly did. I nearly did. Uh, just let me know how the audio is. There's an echo. Up. I need to go up. I am. Filter, audio, expander, yes. Uh, let's see now. Right, let's play it. This is Baldonnell Military Aerodrome in Ireland, and it is from this very spot 70 years ago that a small, single-engine aircraft started its flight into the history books. The plane was a Yonkers W-33 named the Bremen, and there were three people on board. Baron Gunther von Hunefeld, who financed the flight, was a Prussian aristocrat, writer, and classical scholar. One of the pilots was Captain Herman Kohl, a World War I fighter ace, and later bomber pilot. He, he was, was decorated, decorated with the Pro La Merite Blue Max, and the, the other pilot was the officer. I'll, I'll fix all that now. Jesus. Hang on. We're getting echoes. How do we do that now? Uh, 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 hang on. How about now? In charge of the Irish Air Corps, Colonel James Fitzmaurice. This is the story of his part in that first ever flight across the Atlantic from east to west. In other words, from Europe back to America. Captain Aidan Quigley, who was a senior pilot with Aer Lingus, and before that, a flying officer here in the Air Corps, will help me tell the story. Aidan, can you tell me about Fitz's early years? Yes, indeed. James Fitzmaurice was born in Dublin in 1898. The family later moved to Port Alicia, where he spent his formative years. It was in Port Alicia that he met garage owners Louis and Frank Aldrich, who designed and built what was to be the first aircraft in Ireland. Fitzmaurice witnessed its unsuccessful attempt to fly and was determined one day to be a pilot himself. However, 
His first adventurous move was to join John Redmond's Irish National Volunteers, and he stayed loyal to them until he was 16 years old. But the attraction of army life called him to enlist as a cadet with the 7th Battalion of the Lancers, based in the Curragh County, Kildare. 1916 found the battalion called to France, where the young Fitzmaurice found himself fighting French warfare in the Battle of the Somme, where he was wounded in the leg. Now, it's interesting to read Fitzmaurice's definition of courage from those horrific days in the trenches. In trench warfare, you are not just frightened, you are petrified with the fear. And the greater your imagination, the more terrifying the fear. Aged 19, he applied for a transfer to the Royal Flying Corps, later to be named the RAF. His dream of flying at last became a reality. World War I had ended, but despite massive demobilization, Fitzmaurice was retained in the service. He quickly learned to fly at night and to be a skilled navigator. So much so that he was the man that launched the Royal Mail night flights between England and Germany. Quite an achievement for a 21-year-old. Back in Ireland, the new Free State was set up and urgently needed an Air Corps of its own. Fitzmaurice proved a natural choice, so he left the Royal Air Force and joined the new Irish Air Corps based at Baldonnell. In a short time, he became the commanding officer, and it was from here that the famous Flight of the Bremen started long ago in April of 1928. And I went up shooting like the devil about half past five or six o'clock in the morning to be met by Fitz, who was my instructor. And uh, the aircraft was this 504K, old-fashioned aircraft. And he said to me, uh, Hog, and he said, did you ever fly this? I said, no, sir. Well, he said, neither did I. Get in. <laughs> and that was my first real introduction to uh, Colonel Fitzmaurice. Very typical of the man. He, he was um, a real buccaneer, really, you know. How important was the Bremen flight as a milestone in aviation? After all, the Atlantic had been flown many times before the other way, that is, from America to Europe. Alcock and Brown took off from Newfoundland in 1919 and landed in Ireland near Clifton in County Galway, site of the Marconi radio station. About eight years later, a memorable flight was made by a young American, Charles Lindbergh. He was the first person to fly across the Atlantic solo. Again, though, from America to Europe, in fact, from New York to Paris, aided by those prevailing westerly winds. When asked if he could fly the spirit of St. Louis back to New York, Lindbergh said it could not be done. He actually called the East to West flight the Everest of aviation, in other words, impossible. After that epic flight, the race was on to attempt to fly the other way, that is, from Europe back to America against the prevailing winds, which had helped Alcock and Brown, in that way joining the two richest and most powerful continents, North America and Europe. European countries took up the challenge, but most of them ended in tragedy, with the aircraft disappearing in mid-Atlantic. The Frenchmen, Nongasser and Coley, in May 1927, the English team of Minchin, Hamilton, and Princess Lowenstein, Wertheim, and in March 1928, Captain Hinchcliffe and Elsie McKay were last seen flying low in mid-Atlantic. Also in 1927, Colonel James Fitzmaurice and Captain McIntosh took off from Baldonnell in the single-engine Princess Xenia, but after flying into a fierce Atlantic storm, were forced back to Ireland to land in Ballybunion. The Atlantic had narrowly failed to claim another victim. Then late in 1927, there were rumours of another attempt to fly the Atlantic. This was organised by Baron von Hunefeld and the Junkers Aircraft Company in Germany. Because of the official ban on east-west flights throughout Europe, they had to make their plans in secret, so they arrived in Baldonnell in March of 1928. But why was Fitzmaurice selected to be the vital second pilot many months beforehand? Unlike the other um, attempts, the Bremen and the Europa flight before it were managed and directed by the maker of the plane, Junkers. And the obvious man to pick, Losak, who was number one on the Bremen, had opted out. Uh, possibly because he realised after his Atlantic experience that Lindbergh could be right, that it was impossible. And an obvious replacement would have been one of the two men of the Europa.
but that was giving the game away. So he had to look for somebody else, and there was only one, Fitzmaurice, who had also Atlantic experience, had a reputation as a first-class navigator, a pioneer night player, and a smashing pilot. I don't even like flying across. Now, look, look the Irish Sea. I've flown hundreds of times across the Irish Sea with one engine. Stormy weather, no ships in sight. It's horrible, but look at the distance compared to that. It's, uh, it doesn't compare at all. And uh, bad weather, of course, over the sea, anywhere. Even uh, uh, the 60 miles across the Irish Sea is something nobody likes. Well, taking it on across the Atlantic, well, uh, you've got to be brave. Hearing people talking, the general public on bus at uh, trams they were in those days everybody thought he was so foolhardy uh, particularly being a man with responsibilities he was married and had a ch young child but i was always confident that he would succeed because uh, he was so keen so very very keen on do on some adventurous flight like that right so uh, we'll move on and we'll resume some of that uh well we'll learn more about it next week uh, that's like a 20 minute video that's the first kind of eight minutes or so but isn't it fascinating like how many people have before i won't even say tonight because as i said like this is the fourth time this is the fourth time we've done this flight right and um, but how many people before kind of our community like did you know about this flight were you aware of it you know what i mean did you like did you knew that or did you know that the uh, the first the first crossing uh from you know the east to the west was in a german built aircraft nuts isn't it the extreme sport of the day right probably knew about it yes yes it's 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 like class uh never heard of it before it's nuts isn't it not until you came here not until last year Van vipers down Rambog same I mainly learned it because of this community. It's mad, isn't it? AM. <laughs> Airlock, brilliant. The Irish, of course, invented extreme sports. Adam, did you ever look up extreme ironing? I'm just saying it's a, it's a real thing, right? Extreme ironing. Absolutely brilliant. Right, so our aeroplane... Lads, this is just... What, right, so far we're grand. Oh, Jesus, they left me that... Turn off them. Now, company message. Asaj. Yes. Firefly Air Ops. No ADC required. Excellent. Great news. Great news. So, top of drop. Let me see. Uh, 128 nautical miles. 20 minutes? 25 minutes? Watch your runway and approach, Murph. I missed it at the start. That's okay. So, let's let's talk about our approach. So, we're going to bring up Navigraph. Dish, dish. Now, this, this flight... This leg and the next leg are the furthest, and then it starts kind of getting a little bit less, right? So this week, of course, we're in the A320. Next week, it's going to be in the 737, right? And again, we have a lot of ocean to cover. Uh, and then it's going to be the BAE-146. And then it's going to be the Transal, the C-160, all right? Um, so it's it's a fair fair bit of a fair bit of a job here on our legs, right? Fair bit of a job. So if we have a look here at the charts for the approach, it's going to be an ILS 401 pin. So let's have a look. So our star, standard terminal arrival route, is going to bring us in, I think it's Baslu, if I look correctly on me plane. Let's have a look. Is it Baslu? Baslu. All right, that's our initial fix. So let's have a look here. So Baslu, that's where we're going to come in. And look at this, lads. These are called holds. They'll have to hold us. Hold me now. Um, so we're going to ramble in this way. And you'll see then uh, flight level below 120. And below 10,000 feet, we're going to be below 250 knots. All right. So we're going to need some sort of a transition from the star to the approach. Uh, so as we can see here, it's a 01. And it's going to be at SOPAR. The initial fix is at SOPAR. So if we go back in here to the star, that'll bring us into here uh that's from dexon so dexon so our initial approach fix is dexon we're coming in just over here lads right that's our initial fix so 
we need to be at maximum 300 or 220 230 knots three and a half thousand feet and we're going to be flying in this direction then we're going to go on to here uh this the malta star i think it is or the star of malta uh, and that's where we're going to be picking up like at that distance 12 degrees we're about what 10 miles just around here and it's landing on runway zero one zero one is what we're going for jesus all right zero one winds are still looking good they are yeah iaf is dexon yes 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 you know so that's what we're going for So we're not bad like it's it's it to say it sounds fairly straightforward it should be fairly safe straightforward so Baslu, dexon and then we're in okay uh buttons murph buttons murph jesus right how are we looking we're going grand muse or Dougal can only see two people are you still having the issue uh with planes not appearing for you Look at the state of this. Gorgeous. Captain Meowington's an F-117 behind him, look. Absolutely fantastic. Cool. Did you all catch the uh, the eclipse the other day? Nace. Nace is in a tornado flying with us. Look at that. That is class looking. Now, if we were all on join FS, we'd all have contrails. It's mad, isn't it? Dougal's considering a full Windows reinstall? No way. I'm trying to figure out, right? What am I pressing? You're pressing buttons. With the A320 and, you know, there's 737s with us as well. And, of course, we have the fighter jets. What would be the ideal... The ideal fastest, maybe? Like, what would be the ideal aircraft for this kind of stuff? Or is there an aircraft not yet released that you'd love to fly on this route? Or maybe in the next route? Do you know what I mean? Only had partial eclipse where I live. Took some pictures as it went through the clouds. Yeah, yeah. Toto, another one. Jesus. Oh, VC-10. An A340. No, wait. Ali, isn't that in... What A340 is in... Um, X-Plane? Because we do have an A340 there, don't we? B-52. Hi, come on, Gibbo. Good to see you, man. Hope you're well, dude. Hope you're well. Am I upsetting people again? Yes. Yes, I am. Uh, I have it there, of course, but in Microsoft Flight Sim. Yes, yes, yes. Do you know? Uh, the Vulcan to Greenland? Nice. Larger life? No, not at all, man. You can fly out and you like. Like this flight here. With the Bremen. Um, it's only because it's the it's the length of it, it's the size of the flight, right? Um and we are like we're we've to cover savage ground. And like I I just don't have like I have a lot going on at the moment with work and that. I just don't have kind of twelve or thirteen hours for a single stream. 
Um, so I said, look, we'll do something a little bit different this year. We'll break it up into four different legs, four different aircraft. Um, and yeah, they are the airliners, but like they're probably most suited. Um, doesn't mean we're getting rid of our general aviation stuff. Not at all. Not at all. And again, it just so happens like our IO4 stuff with the, with the weather and everything associated with instrument flying rules. Um, it's kind of suited to some of the bigger, larger aircraft as well. But we got a ton of other stuff coming up for the low and slow. Tons, lads. Like, a ridiculous amount. Do you know? Uh, Mr. Dan says, Murph, if I'm honest, I would much prefer it split up. Oh, nice. Nice. If you had a true SR-71, I would fly in that. On VATSIM. And ask for a speed check. <laughs> How's the Concorde going, Mr. Dan? The weather into BIKF is surprisingly not a Jesus. Isn't it, Energizer? Water, water everywhere, but none for Murph to drink. Colonel Fork, how are you? It's good to see you, man. Right, we're doing... Well, we're doing what we should be doing. Jesus, did I miss me top of drop? Balls! Oh, no, I didn't. It, it's still here. Whew. 60 miles away. We were there in a few minutes. Uh, actually, what, what altitude does she want after that? So, 380 down to 19... She shouldn't do it yet. So we'll tell her to do that now in a moment, right? You need another Guinness. Brilliant. Sum of day 15. Beta is behaving very well. Yeah, like... Are they, they're talking about letting that out at the end of the end of the month, aren't they? Uh, Zybok, correct. Half day left at work. No bother at all, Colonel Fork. Oh, we're having a good day, dude. Super Ty says, I've seen the whole thing. My area was near dull. Or near... Or, sorry, was near full. Totally. It made the birds panic, and I, f I felt the temperature drop from 15. What? Really? That's awesome. Uh, where's the tablet on Xbox 320? Couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you. Caught the confirmed April 30th. Yeah, I think it's like the end of the month. Eamon says you probably think it'll slip in. Yeah. I don't know, like, my plan over the weekend, um, I'll, I'll probably do a bit of streaming. I want to fly in, uh, I want to fly an X-Plane again. Just to, you know what I mean? Ian Fisher, you're very welcome in. Many thanks for the raid and welcome aboard. You join us here somewhere near Iceland <laughs> on our first leg of the Bremen flight. And uh, we're in the A320, rambling along, flight level 380. We're doing about 445 over the ground. And uh, I expect to be... Jesus, look at the state of that. I expect to be landing in about eh, 30 minutes, give or take. Give or take. Uh, many thanks for the raid. I hope you're well, Ian. Uh, Sim of day 15 delay is also causing many headaches for a few devs. Yes, absolutely. So Concord is going well. However, I'm going a direct route, not actually this route. That's okay. 468, that's not bad. Dogs can't perform MRIs, but cats can. <laughs> uh, top of drop reach, starting with slow spiral descent into madness. Yes, yes, yes. We're getting close to our own top of drop. For 10 miles now. Brilliant. You're sort of learning sim brief and fuel weight, all the jazz. Yeah, but it's interesting, isn't it? Um, 60 nautical miles for Dougal. Jesus, Dougal, I thought... I could have sworn you were just here with us. So, top of drop is just after... Oh, wait, no, hang on. I'm about the same, Dougal. So, it's it's not at that waypoint. 62 north, 02 west. Uh, it's just beyond that. So, 40 miles exactly from my location. 69 miles, top of drop. Yeah. 
Zoom in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, 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 there's a gap. <laughs> a considerable gap. That's his class looking though, isn't it? Look at that Vulcan down there as well. Beautiful. So what do you think, lads? When the 777 comes out, are we all going to go for a very long haul flight? You know, will we give it a bash? A long haul group flight. Like, like long haul flying, I, I, you like, you know, I wish I could say I like, you know, I'm no good at them. Um, because, you know, it's me. But, <laughs> for this, for the sake of the triple seven, I think it has to be done. Uh, Dougal, I would, I think, yes, I think we'll give it a bash for Vatsim. Just to see what the crack would be. Yeah, long haul, I'm, it's, old veteran, I agree, man, I agree, like, it's, I, I, I get real geared up to say, yeah, I want to do a long haul flight, but let's be honest about it, you know, after takeoff, like, even before top of climb, I'm like, eh, want to land or something now, do you know what I mean? We need Al Alison's bum cushion? I would think so. I would think so. I, I just, I can't, I can, I've done long haul stuff before, but like, I, I've no, you know, I've no real issues flying for like friggin' hours, but like, I want to have multiple starts and stops. We've done it before, like, you know. We'll have to do another one. But the Bremen, this flight for the Bremen, it, it's not suited to that because, I mean, we're flying from, you know, Ireland, Iceland, Greenland, uh, and down into Canada. Like, there's 700 miles on each leg and, like, you're over water. So there's no opportunity to stop. Do you know what I mean? So, um, Everett to Pittsburgh. Yeah, well, I want to look at the I-91. Can I take my existing 777? Yes. Yes, yes. Ian, I'm using, um, Join FS. So, yeah, 100%, man. Uh, Colonel Fork, there will be streamage indeed. Three hour legs are fine. Yeah, three is about the maximum. Yeah. Dougal says, to be honest, I'm not sure I'll get this. Well, you say that now, right? But you know, after like we go messing with it and flying with it, you'd be looking at it going, blast and damn, <laughs> right? Because I was the same. Like any airliner is like, nah, I don't want an airliner. And then you see it and you're like, oh, but it's very good. Like, put it this way. I don't... I'm more of a Boeing fan. Straight up, I prefer Boeing. Well, I think I do. This A320 Phoenix, I kind of blame Gibbo, but, like, this A320... Like, this is, like, an incredible experience to have in flight sim. It's incredible. I love flying this aircraft. Land ho! It's, uh, it's a challenge. It's very rewarding when you stay on top of it, Right? And I I love the I love the logic. I love the systems. It's a this is an awesome, awesome aircraft. Airliners were a supply uh, surprise to me in how fun they are. Yeah. Murph likes his planes in convertible format, indeed. But there's also look there's, there's, there's still some cracking GA stuff out there as well. But for these sort of flights, forget it like. The flight of the Bremen would be no use. You know what I mean? Um Yes, the F-28 Colonel Fork is awesome. Like, some of the other routes, the, the low and slow, like, we did a we did a lovely flight the other night with the Grob. Oh, the Dukes, Dougal. Oh, my God. I think it's safe to say that them Dukes, right, from Black Square, I think they are going to be a... I think they're going to set a new standard. And, like, th that, and that's, like, a strong claim, right? But I think they are going to set a new standard. You know? I, 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 and I mean this in a good way. I think they're going to force A to A to kind of look to see what else or, you know, what else they can kind of implement. The Dukes will have you back in GA. For, yeah, 100%, man. I can't wait for the Dukes. They look incredible. DC3 from Australia to London. That'd be awesome too. But again, like, when we're looking at some of the... Uh, Fighting words for Raoul as well, yeah. When when you're when you're looking at some of the long haul, I like long haul flights with a twist. I like multiple stopping points. It's just it's it's I'd be fair because like you're in the cruise. There's not much to happen in the cruise. You know, you're cruising. Now we are very, very close to our top of drop here, lads. Look at this. We'll wait a moment, we'll wait till we turn and then we'll activate it, right? <laughs> you know Mrs. McTavish is out for blood? 
<laughs> uh, with so many stops, people can jump in and out. Exactly. Exactly. That's the point. Because not everyone has all the... Not everyone has this time, right? And, like, there's me. I don't have the time to do uh, very long-haul flights. Breaking up the Bremen, it's, it's like, it's a three-hour flight. That's about the limit, you know? Do the mail run in the 247. You have all these options, like. Right, we need to put in our destination data. Uh, so let's have a look. Cruise. Uh, performance. Cruise. Next phase. Destination. Grand. Initialize it. Or, Jesus, where do we do this now? Program? No. How do we put in our descent data? Uh... Where do we put this in again? Next phase twice. Ah, super. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Where is this now? Okay, so let's uh, bring up the airport information and we'll get some stuff. So we need, what do we need? We need the local Q&H. So... Looking at our information, local Q and H on the METAR. So the METAR, the raw METAR is winds 0118 knots, good visibility, few clouds at 1900, temperature zero, Q and H, uh, niner, niner, eight, zero, niner. Wait, now, why is it doing it that way? Zero, niner, niner, eight. Okay. Temperature is zero. Now, when it comes to our approach for the ILS, we are saying our decision height would be 335. Uh, full flap landing. Full flap landing. VLS is going to be 128, okay. So, uh, drop it down there now, brother rabbit. Although it's giving me top of drop all the way up here now. But let's just get down a little bit, right? We'll start a descent from here. Speed is going to come back and let's see what happens. There's an app in flight sim that shows the old airmail routes. I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Murph, have you messed with the P-47 updates? I haven't, Colonel Fork. It's on my list of stuff to do. It's on my list of stuff to do. Hundred and eighty four nautical miles. Like this is like look at the systems we have here, right? I mean, we know what the weather is doing, right? We know what the uh you know, we know exactly where we are. These lads had none of that. Like none of it at all. Absolutely zero. Hadn't a shagging clue where they were going. And yet, well they, well, they got where they kinda wanted to go. Sorta of, nearly. They did get lost now, you know. But in general they were alright. Beautiful. So I have MK Studio scenery for uh, Kevlovic. Should be interesting. Love the Stearman. One of the best relaxing planes. Oh yeah, Stearman's great. Which one do you have, Airlock? There's a newer one. There's a newer Stearman. So you had um, DC Designs in a Stearman and then you have another one. The other one's actually really nice. So, again, let's go in and have a look, gonk at our little approach. So, phew, that's the wrong button. Phew. We'll pop this little fella out. Happy little fella. And let's look at our planation. So, we'll go plan. Bring the range out. So, we can see Baslu. So all the waypoints are there. She's so just dreamy, sleepy, them. nighty, snoozy, snooze. That was absolutely terrifying. Who was that? Sorry, Murray, you devil. Muse and me spent many hours in the steering until they broke with an update. Oh, really? Yeah, DC Designs. No, there's a newer one than that airlock. Golden Age Simulations. That's the one, Ali. Very, very good. Didn't someone nick a couple of wheels after Skoda Murph? You've chased them, but after that, you were tired. Oh, no, you were too tired. Brilliant. 
Okay, so we can see the crack here now, look. Now, we don't have a link from Dexon across, so there is... Look at that. Look at the gap there, look. It's only bringing us to Dexon, so we need the uh, ILS approach. Oh, here's a question. How do we put that in? Hmm. Well, Jay is a don't delete that. So the arrival uh, approach ILS 10. Now, the approach is via, is it? Oh, hang on. KF V1. Is it better? It is better, yeah. You need the ILS Z approach. Aha. Uh -huh. That's interesting. So there's no ILSZ for zero one look. I went past it? ILS zero one. Ah, ILSZ zero one. Oh yeah. So the star is gonna be What did we call it? The Baslin three, wasn't it? Baslin 3. Why can't I select it? Let's see what happens here. Okay. Baslu, Elsig. That looks a bit better, doesn't it? There we go. She's up. Oh, still not. So Dexon over cross look. Hmm. Via Dexon. Transition on via Dexon. Thank you, Muse. That fixed that. Brilliant. Right, so that means we should be now totally fixed, which we are. Great news, lads. These are brilliant and geniuses. Jesus, I'd have been here till tomorrow. It's all right. Don't worry about it. Totally fine. Right. How are we looking now? Altitude 28,000 on the way down. Now, radio nav, we should have the frequency of the ILS dialed in. And the frequency is 111 decimal 1. 111 decimal 1. Yeah. 111 decimal 3. Uh oh. Oh, yeah, sorry. 111 decimal 3. Right, it's got it. It's got it. Uh, final course should be 012. Has it there? Final course 012. Okay. All is well in the realm. You're getting crackling audio in the sim, says Energizer. Oh no. Never good. How are we looking now? There's Dougal. Captain IF. Zard. Corsair. Uh, Quasar Archer. Willow, how much in the MiG 29 still? Woosh Blamo. F 86. That's a great plane, isn't it? That got an update today as well, actually, didn't it? Now that you have the correct ILS, you can change the radio, radio alt MDA to 200. Ooh. Good man, Dougal. That would have ended up in an absolute ball of mess. Impending CTD when audio starts going. Oh, really? Typhoon got updated today, but I haven't had time to fly it. Okay. Right, I think we're kind of half looking good. We hope. Bit of windage, but we're okay. Uh, audio is also stuttering. Mine is okay so far, but like, Jesus, do you know what I mean? Let's see what happens, lads. 
Unhorsed goose finally caught up. Brilliant. Brilliant. So what are your plans for the weekend, lads? Ali has a flight tomorrow. Do, 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 do. Are you going out? Are you going flying? What be the story? That is class. So this is our Firefly Air radar. Look at the amount of aircraft. Isn't that cool looking? Definitely on Southeast Asia. Yes, 100%. Look at that. Who's down? Crying Zonda. Kevin Riley. Who's beside you, Kevin? Captain Sickbag. Come on yourself. Stick figure. Rambog. Nighthawk. Sean Dale. Jeez, there's an absolute load of us here. This is class. There's Sterling. See you later. Fierce Wolf. Cy Murray. Gregor. Renoir. Soaring AJ. Charlie. Zard. Martel. Paparazzi. Filthy. Druid Zeus. Then we have Eamon 1973. The amount of them. There's Muse. Toto. Rogers RC. Larger Life. Ali's gone that way. I saw that flight plan earlier on, actually, Ali. I was going to go the way, and it's the same amount of time. Seemingly. There's MDA and Reckless Ray. Awesome stuff, lads. Really, really awesome. That's a huge number of people flying. That's so cool. Right, we're doing some Turny McTurney stuff. Land ahead. Okay, so we put in an initial drop of 19,000, so we're going to keep going. Uh, 10,000, I suppose. Let's see what it does, right? Is there enough beer for us all, right? Firefly is representing, absolutely. The description for this stream said English. You lie! Arash al Khamir now, you know? Jesus, look at the. Uh, you gotta love that detailing. It's stunning. Absolutely stunning. As a matter of interest, can anyone see me? You can see Dougal. You see Captain Meow and Things give us a wing wave. Me and Mike is there in an F-14, look. I'm Scottish. Hello, my Celtic friend. Hello from Ireland. Good to see you, man. How are we getting on? I'd say we'd be down and out of it in about 20 minutes. Terrible sound stutters. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. Right, what's Navigraph telling us? Oh, we're in star territory. There we are now, lads. Uh, fly level 120 on the way in. Then 10,000, 7,000. So we've got to be careful here with speeds and all the devil. But we're on the way. Indicated is 250. That's quite okay. 18,000. Uh, I believe it's it for the moment. Autopilot just banked hard right and overstressed. What? Iceland doesn't look very flat. This could be bumpy. Indeed. Uh. Yeah. This, this is going to be interesting, lads. <laughs> what if we were to empty, enter a hold here? Can we do that? I need... Do you know... I need to learn how to um, enter holes. You do it here. Right turns. Oh, jeez. We're doing that on Monday. Hold me now.
Okay. Eris has set up for a landing. The wind is giving it nuts. Hold the line! <laughs> Twenty-two knots against the nose, sorta. We need to be down to twelve thousand. It's going to be interesting. There's some good tutorials on YouTube. Re holes. I've been practicing go arounds all week. Oh, come on yourself! I was put into a hole today by London Control, and then he forgot me. Uh oh. Yeah, so like the the idea of the hold, as in getting your aircraft in these these sort of aircraft, it's fairly straightforward. I mean, the autopilot knows exactly what to do, um, and it'll it'll adjust things for wind and all this sort of stuff, right? When it comes to your general aviation or smaller aircraft, they mightn't have the same capabilities. So in order to fly a hold, you got to worry about okay, well, what's my entry into set hold? Is this you know, there's three ways: parallel, teardrop, and direct. And then you're saying, right, how do I aim off for the wind? Because well. You're never just going to have a headwind or a tailwind. You're always going to have a crosswind. So you have to kind of take that into consideration to say, if the wind is blowing against me, I need to go faster. But then when I turn, I need to re reduce my speed. Otherwise, I'll end up not doing a hold. You know what I mean? It'll be it'll be interesting. It's just something to be aware of. If ATC say, hey, you need to do this. Well, you'll, you'll know what they're asking you to do. <laughs> and then we practice doing it. Keen Lafford is back, and he says, I bet you didn't even know I was gone. Keen, it's great to see you. We knew you were gone. We sensed, like, a disturbance in the force. Do you know what I mean? Now, let's have a look. Let's have a look. This is class looking. So just uh what's the transition level here? That'll be on our chart. Uh, well, there's a couple of things we need to kind of consider. First and foremost, the missed approach. Climb on course at 012 to 3000 feet. Expect vectoring by approach. Missed approach with lost communications. Passing Nerco uh, at 14 miles out. Turn left direct to Tobzi. So, Nerco. And then, oh look, there's a hold. And then you hold at 3000 feet. Jesus. Where's Nerco? Is it further on, I wonder? Transistent altitude, 7,000 feet. So we need that. We need this. We need the airport elevation. And what else do we need? 12 degrees, 1800 feet, established here, and then 12, Jesus, 12 degrees. Okay. Okie dokie. Okay, so there's 10 put in the box. After 10, it's going to want 8, 7, and 3. 8, 7, and 3. Now, this should hold us. Uh, negative, Gibbo. Uh, that's HDF, Murph, not Descent. Huh? Oh, sorry, Heading, 120. Or 012. What was I... Right, so what's... Ah, uh, three degrees. I beg your pardon. The glide slope is three degrees. I was looking at the wrong one. Yes. So it's a three degree. Hmm. So, quick. Jesus, turn on the lights. 
We're inbound for a landing. Right. Speed will drop down as well. Outer marker, good to see you. Quick question about Fatsum, if you don't mind. When connected in observer mode, is bad form to taxi without an airport that's controlled and even take off? Uh, as far as I know, my brain has gone to mush, but as far as I know, when you're in observer mode, can you be seen in Vatsim? I don't think so. Yeah, they, they can't see you. If you're in observer mode, they can't see you. Okay, 8,000. She wants 7,000. We better put this into managed. More drag needed with the Jesus. Okay. Bring our own speed into this as well. So engines are on idle. That's grand. We're going to stick out the old brakes here now for a minute. This is now in manage. Drop her down to 3,000. And uh, we'll go approach mode now in a moment. If you're in OBS mode, the observer mode, they won't show up in the sim for other pilots or controllers. So you can do what you like. Super. Don't slow too quickly on the runway or you'll need one of those doctors. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. Arm approach. Speed is coming down nicely. That's what we wanted. There's 7,000 feet. Local barrow. Nine or nine or eight is what we're after. Jay's the amount of us. Look at this. Brilliant. Uh, now, how do we get rid of this? Okay, so it's going to be a right turn and then we're straight in. I think we're looking good. Lights are on. Cabin crew is advised. Auto brake set. Speed 200. First notch of flaps. Localizer captured. We'll have a visual on the runway now in a sec. There she be. Little bit high, methinks. All right, get the speed down. There we go. So far, so good. Light slope has been captured, fully established on the ILS. Watch the old light slope now. We're a little bit high. Straighten up. Now, to make life a little bit easier, we could drop the gears for a bit of drag. Let's do that. Here, coming down. 2,500. Speed brakes are out. That's okay. Start bringing that speed back quickly. Flap set to two. 20 knots off the nose, that's interesting. Flaps 3. And flaps full. So we break in. Spoilers around, flaps are set full, signs are on, gear down, cabin's ready. 
And we just ramble in. 20 knots against the nose. Right, let's uh let's take it out of this. My airplane. Let's see what happens here, sports fans. This will either be grand or terrible. Jesus, don't make a mess, Murphy. Whatever you do, don't make a mess, right? Four mile final. It'll be grand, lads. Low fuel warning, Dougal. Jesus. The Pappy are happy for the moment. Land ASAP, right? Little low. Jeez, look at the scenery here. It's nice, isn't it? Except for that blue tile out there. But apart from that, it's really nice. Beautiful. Watch your speed. I took full bags, didn't even need them. <laughs> All right, easy, does it? Speed is good. Twenty-two knots on the nose. Dreamy, sleepy, nighty, snoozy, snooze. Jesus, cut bad. Easy, easy. 500. 500. Little bit low. Four. That's better. 100 above. Landing. Yeah. We're going the wrong Look way. Look at this They've done studies, you know. Ah, Jesus, all the alerts. 60% of the time, it works. Every time. 100. Oh, Jesus, it's bumpy. 50, 40, 30, 20, Dude, have you been drinking? I have, Ted. I've been drinking like ah! a man. 173, we'll take it. Reverses out, spoilers out. Reverse is stowed, spoilers in, flaps in. Jesus, that was a bit of crack, wasn't it? That was a bit of crack. All the alerts went off. He's absolutely true to be silent. Thanks, lads. Yeah, great supportive bunch of lads. Do you know? Jesus. <laughs> Holy crap. Right, now where do we go? Who's in charge? Do we get off here? I suppose we better. But the East Apron is... Oh, that way, Murph. We'll go this way and then straight down, right? I'll go behind you, lads. Don't worry. You all line up there. I'll, has come to a complete stop and the captain has switched I'll ramble in behind you. At no time in history has a passenger beaten a plane to the gate, so don't even try it. Look at this. Hang on a second now. I'll taxi down the far side and come back up. Right, Jesus. Just log onto our website. You may now switch on any electric devices again. And once again, thank you for flying, Firefly Air. It's been our pleasure to have you on board. And we look forward to welcoming you on board another one of our services in the very near future. Thank you. Goodbye. David McGrath, good to see you. David, I don't. I went looking for it, man. I cannot find that at all. I sent it to you like twice. But I can't Hello? find it. Holly Squire, thank you for the follow. Welcome in, man. The sounds are so good on this.
Right, we'll back taxi here onto the runway just so we can see everyone. Jeez, the amount of you, lads. The amount of you. Ah, look at the state of this. Look at the amount of you, lads. So our first leg... Oh, Jesus, go handy. You're not GA. Uh, our first leg complete. Don't mind me being on the runway. Oh, well, I'm probably going to ruin it for someone now. Hang on. We'll do it something like this. Right, lads. You know the drill, right? Every bit of light. You know. Everything. Lights. Ailerons, you name it, it's time to move it as uh, we'll do our kind of uh, bit of a taxi maneuver. Yeah, baby! Mother of God! Jesus! Asher, where would you get it? Like, lads, absolutely amazing flight. Amazing flight. Like, the airline, oh, Jesus, Zard is in. The airline is, as I say, like, I mean, I don't do an awful lot, especially we don't do an awful lot with group flights. This was a lot of fun. It was a nice route. You know, the weather was interesting. And um, it was it was a lot of fun flying this aircraft. The A320 from Phoenix, gee, it's so good. It's like, it's a great... Uh, exp oh no, Jesus, Drew and Zeus, sorry. It's a great experience flying this aircraft. Um, and with you guys flying along with us, it's just class. Like, it really, really is. You know, cost index 99 helped. Yeah, the cost index of five. So it was it was super awesome. It was super awesome. So it's, it's leg one of four. Next week, we're taking out the 737. And that's from Iceland over to Greenland. We'll learn a bit more about the crew of the Bremen uh, and more about the flight, right? Uh, and I have to figure out what those doohickeys are on the, on the landing gear. I'll find out. I'll ask someone more intelligent than me, um, which is anyone, really. Um, but yeah, thank you all so very, very much indeed. That was so much fun. Um, I will be streaming at some stage over the weekend, just doing my usual because of other aircraft to mess around with. I'm kind of itching to get back into the MD-11 as well. I'm looking forward to that. So, um, guys, have a great weekend. Thank you so much for flying. Monday night, we continue on with our IF4 ATC series. And uh, we're going to spend a little bit of time with holes and uh, missed approaches as we have another uh, fully staffed up flight. Wednesday, we're going to have all the news. And then, of course, next Friday, uh, it's going to be the 737. And, uh, well, who knows? There might be a stream or two between now and then. And... Uh, have I learned which way the rudder steer the... Yes, yes. Left is my right. No, wait. Left is left and right is my right. Right? Almost made it. Four still coming in. Oh, Jesus. Hang on a second. Do we have inbounds? That's live weather. I, I was kind of half expecting snow, to be honest. Interesting. 
Don't forget, lads, there is an achievement for Firefly Air for everyone who's flying. Um, so make sure that's all connected in. If you were unable to use, um, you know, FSU IPC and the landing rate uh, monitor, uh, just submit a pie rep. Just submit a pie rep. Uh, I'll ramble off the runway here and I'll move the camera down towards the end to see if we can catch the last few folks arriving. How's that? So we'll just park here. Ah, oh, don't crash into Nighthawk. Right, grand. Uh, park there, Murphy. And let's just see if I can... Uh, Let's just see if we can catch the other aircraft. Just to see, right? Just to see. So here is zero one. Just the, it, look, the whole airport's up in proper elevation, look. That's mad. Right, let's zoom out this way. Here's a few coming in. We have an A320 on approach. The sim is trying to load him in. No, 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 no. We'll go back a bit further. It's mad the way it doesn't, like, kind of say, oh, yeah, here's more aircraft. It'd drive you nuts, couldn't it? Jesus, look how far we've gone. Do you know, I th the last time we flew in here, there's Rogers, the last time we flew in here, I'm almost certain that we were snowed in or socked in. It was pure, like, fog and... Rain and all that sort of jazz. There's Toto. Or did we go Reykjavik the last time? Tiger Shark, you take care. It was a famous Air Force base, wasn't it? There's Far Far Away. There's Toto. Great stuff, lads. It was a fun flight, wasn't it? It was a, like, distance, 700 nautical miles. Three hours. Boof. Not bad at all, lads. Not bad at all. Super, super fun. There's Rogers. Rogers, what did you take for the flight? Oh, a, a G13. Ah, yeah, it's Griffin. Or Griffin. That is cool looking, isn't it? Still frozen on YouTube? Really? The technology just, just escapes me this evening. Beautiful. Uh, you did an 892? Nice, nice, nice. Awesome stuff. Right, lads, I shall be away. Uh, I'll probably be live at some stage tomorrow or Sunday, definitely. So uh, keep an eye out on the streams. Uh, if you're on YouTube, we'll be doing weekend streams on Twitch. And, uh, well, lads, again, thank you so much for all the support, for hanging out, for putting up with me. And, uh, well, we'll see you the next time. Have a great weekend, and we'll uh, we'll catch you soon. Stand by for the raid. We'll go say hello to someone. And uh, also be sure to check out our Discord. Exclamation point. Discord will bring you there. And, uh, yeah, shin well now. Good luck to you. Here, ease up, Sharon. Oh, Jesus. Stop, stop, stop. Murphy's trying to fly a plane, he's not doing it very well, is he? Stop, stop, stop. Don't sink, don't sink. Don't Give us a second. Sink. Don't sink, don't Shh, sink. It's grand, it's grand, it's grand, it's grand. <laughs> is that because I didn't set off uh, or set up me tape? You have to talk like this, everyone's like this, and you explain by doing this, and you keep jumping up and down. You need to get the breakfast ready early in the morning and cook it together fast, fast, fast. Cook the breakfast. Okay, okay. Gordon Ramsay, the legend. Could you imagine him cooking your breakfast? If you didn't like it, you'd be afraid to say anything. I don't like it, he's after burning it. What did you say? You ready for this to give up? I'm a little teapot show. Dreamy sleepy. Nike snoozy snooze. Here is me handle. And here is me spout. When I get all steamed up.